Well, this may be it, folks. I mean, this may be the. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of static right now. There's a there's a whole bunch of stuff being thrown at me, and I. I what did I do? What did I do wrong? You can't ever find out what you did wrong. You know, I I've never seen so much blowback off a topic as I guess the the. The, the blood type thing is really a big no-no. I, 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 you know, I know in Christian circles they hate it because it, it diminishes their power. It, it, they can't control it. But, but it's really, I thought, coming from the other side, which would be, you know, the powers that be, the, uh, the bloodline elites, that they would be the ones doing the, uh, you know, uh, the targeting and the follow, they try to wipe out a certain thing. Does that make sense? That the blue bloods, would because that's what you're talking about. That they would try to wipe it out. So, you know, I only mention it because of so many targeted individuals having the problem, making a connection with their blood type. That's the only reason I mention it, to make sure that they don't die doing something stupid. And by the way, when you're targeted, they want you dead. I, I don't understand this. They're trying to drive me insane, but you no, know, no. They want you dead. Yes, they get power off the degrading. Who gets the power? The witches. The witches orchestrate all the targeting. Why do they do that? How do they do that? They, they, I saw them target this one guy. Very kind of a feeble, kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. And before you know it, they, they, they got into his head or they just targeted him. And then the next thing you know, he's like this blithering dope. I mean, just sort of almost semi-retarded. His gifts, his disturbing, you know, he became a derelict. Uh, and I said to my friend, you know, remember I talk about producer Mike. I said to Mike, because he knows more about, you know, he's, he's not quite free. He's got some problems. He's, uh, I said, why do they do that? Why they do that to your? What happened to your friend there? Why, why? Why did they? Why did they do that? And we're talking about the, you know, either a coven or the the witches, you know, because they they have, they run everything here. And uh, he said, uh, basically, because because they could, because by stealing all his gifts and by you know, scrambling them inside and out, they they got to and 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 how they do that. Oh, well, you know, yes, he was microwaved. And yes, he was this, he was that. All these things happened. Well, did the witches go call someone up and tell someone? They're all inter- linked in, a net- in networks. They're all, they don't need to call each other. They just all do what they do. I thought that was understood. Where do you think it comes from? Like psychotronic warfare. From God? From some secular scientist who decides to go rogue and start zapping people because he wants to get his rocks off? You, you, you think that's, that's where it comes from? No. He's manipulated into it by someone that he's beholden to in a network. If you asked him and put him in a, if you waterboarded him or did, did one to torture him and beat a confession out of him, he'd say, they made me do it. I didn't have any choice. I didn't want to do that to anyone, but I had to. It's my job. They made me do it. Is what you're going to hear from just about all of them. Which is, isn't that what they said at the Nuremberg trials? This is nothing new, is it? I mean, you know, see, that's the thing. People keep trying to put it into some, you know, you're talking about spiritual warfare. You're talking about a world run by, witch, by witches, by witchcraft, a, witch, a witch hierarchy, by covens, okay? Uh, a la secret societies and so forth, which are also, in most cases, the, sub, the subgroup of a coven. So... And they work directly with the with the powers of the earth, and with Satan, and 
they're tuned into all those spirits and they're the mediums and the guides and they're, you know, they're running it all. And they're, they, they don't have to drop, but they're not like the Wicked Witch with the cauldron and all that. They do it all in their minds. If their minds, you know, it's, it's all mental. It's mental computers. Anyway, that's who decides who gets targeted and who isn't. So the idea that you could never find out why you're targeted, exactly right. That's the whole idea. To never find out why is the whole idea. Meanwhile, the reason your energy is going down is because while they're doing all that, they're feeding off you. They're checking on you. They're watching you. They're feeding. As you get more and more, you know, looking like some kind of a meth addict. Yeah, they're feeding off all that. Feed, they feed off the degradation. And then finally, the death of that person. What's the remedy? Faith in Jesus Christ. You rebuke that stuff. You bind it and cast it out. You go, well, they do it anyway. No, they don't do it anyway. They, I prayed and prayed and prayed. It wouldn't stop. Well, you know, uh, I hate to say this, but you, whatever you're, you may be doing something, but it's not praying. Begging is not praying. Besides, you have to have faith to pray. Faith is power. You know, you don't fight a very powerful force with no power. You need the power of the Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the the living God. You apply that to the problem, and I don't think there's a problem. Well, the Lord also allows us to be persecuted because, you know, as he was persecuted, we are. It doesn't mean you're going to be liked. You're still going to be hated and you're still going to be persecuted because why? Because he was persecuted. You belong to him. You're not going to be the most popular. If you want to be popular, go become a left wing tranny and they will guarantee you they'll be throwing roses before you know it. Oh, yeah. Garlands. <laughs> You have hundreds of millions of people at your funeral throwing flowers, having a big, a big love in. But you made another choice. God brought you to another place. God put you in another vehicle. God put you in another vessel. That vessel goes out of here. Now, for the earth dwellers, their father is the devil. And they could be Jew, they could be Catholic, they could be atheist. It doesn't matter what they say they are, what label they apply to themselves. They could be earth dwellers or not. So when you say rescue humanity, you don't really mean the earth dwellers. They're already rescued. Thank you very much. They're already spoken for. They're not hanging in the balance They're not in the valley of decision. They are where they belong. And that's just, you know, there's just, people have a hard time with that. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing, hunting you guys down. Look at the hunting down, just just diamond and silk on on Facebook. Both of these women believe in the Lord. Strong belief, I believe. Both are backing Trump. Both have been, they haven't said anything about Satanism, satanic abuse. They're not even talking about human trafficking, Pizzagate, all that stuff. They haven't, they haven't mentioned any of those trigger words. They've just been dealing with Trump and the persecution against Trump. That's it. And they were, and they were targeted for extinction. How much more so would they, would they target those who know something? I mean, not that they don't, but who know and speak about those things that are, you know, taboo subjects in the establishment world because they would like you to believe that none of that exists. All that exists, according to Fox News, according to CNN, according to the movie theater, according to the New York Times, according to everything, all that exists is what you can see, 
touch and feel any more than that, you get penalized. If you start bringing Jesus into that equation, you're totally penalized, even by the religion that touts the same name. And that's enough also to target anyone who is, even if you're cut out for the Lord, you don't know it yet. They're going to target you. Because they can see that in your spirit. They're going to target you. They just need, they, it's, it's all psychic, okay? They're linked psychically. They're linked in a hive psychic thing. When you become one of them, you get linked too. They can, all the thoughts you have are in the collective. They all know everyone's thoughts. And so when the signal goes to target, to do this, do that, they work as a collective, as a hive, to target, to do this, to do that, to, 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 to intervene and ruin someone's life. It's a force coming from, it's the doctor, the baker, the, the, the policeman, the, the kids on the bikes riding around. It's, it's every, everything and everyone in the whole, your whole reality suddenly turns on you specifically. You tell people about it, they say you're crazy, you need to shrink, the next day everything looks normal again. Then, it go, then just as you're about to accept that, it goes back to the way it was again. So what's the cure for that? Of course, most people would think that's mental illness. They would say, in a terrestrial world, with a world ruled by the underneath, by the underground, where, where knowledge is forbidden, where anything but zombie-like behavior, nothing else is accepted, except for just wrote, go along to get along. Uh, in a world like that, which, which we could also call hell, the one thing you do not do is try to figure it out. And if you do, you'll get targeted. Just like, you know, if you, if, you know, any, any of these things will get you targeted. Jesus, going for the truth, being a truther, being a, uh, being a, uh, uh, being th- these days, being a Republican even. It doesn't really matter. It's just they, the, the prevailing way is Satan. And Satan owns the, the religions and, and the witches and the, you know, the witches, the witches all run the hives. The hives are in the witches' control. And from the hives come the, the, Technical, technological, military industrial complex, all that's part of the hive. Uh, it's all a hive. How do you think Wiener's computer disappeared? It's part of the hive. Pizzagate Israel, absolutely. And yes, many times over the past year, two years, they've had a they've wanted to arrest people. The NYPD wants to arrest people very much. And what's preventing them? There's a whole system here. It's called the Babylonian world system. And it runs everything. It's, it, it's linked by the all-seeing eye, the pyramid, the psychic link, the soul tap, tethered souls in time and space, owned, scalped, recycled, whatever, in this whatever earthly configuration Now, for these sorry SOBs, <laughs> I say that euphemistically. I don't mean to. Well, just I'll just strike that. These for these 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 people that are tethered to all this, I feel very sorry for them. I I know when they attack me, I don't hate them. I mean, I'll just sit there and be a doormat, but I I don't hate them because I know how frustrated it is being that your whole reality is like the television or what you can see, touch, and feel. You don't know anything beyond that. Just imagine. Yet your soul, your spirit wants to learn, wants to see things, wants to do things, and everything is squelched and stifled. Do we have your little life, and you go around little circles of people you agree with and who agree with you, who, who you let them live, they let you live. You form a society to keep everything else under, to, 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 to button it down, to bottle it up, to make sure it doesn't get out. You know, in order to keep your reality safe, they can't let the truth come out. But it's coming out all over the place, thanks to, that's right, this whole movement that's come through, including Donald J. Trump. Whether he knows it or not, he gets a lot of credit for blowing the lid off everything. That's why they're so mad at him. They're naked. 
You can see Paul Ryan's totally compromised. He's completely conflicted. You see that he's owned six ways, it's, it's up, up one side, down the other. He, he's, they, they've got him six ways to Sunday, I was going to say. They, they, they basically they'll rape him every single day, and he can't say a word. You know, and, and he just, he's, he's going home. He can't, he can't handle it. Being, you know, sh- slimed every day by Lou Dobbs and Fox News and other people that just openly calling for Ryan to resign and calling him a snake and a rhino. And he just can't, none of them can take it anymore. They're leaving. They got blown out. They lost. So the Democrats feel like they're going to fill the void. And the Republican, these Rhino Republicans are going to hand over the Congress to them. And they're going to slide in and take over. And then they're going to punish, 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 punish anybody that tried to tell the truth. Anybody that tried to, tried to fix the thing. Anybody that tried to bring prosperity. Anybody that tried to bring more freedom. Anybody that tried to have trade deals and cooperation around the world. Anybody that tried to improve the situation will be hunted down and punished and, yes, targeted. Gang stalking goes mainstream, baby. And they have all your social networks. They have all your posts. They know who you are. You consider yourself a TI at this point. Or a child of God. I like the name child of God better than TI, don't you? Part of the problem in teaching this kind of stuff is that, uh, you know, much of the people that these phenomenon have have happened to them, they they uh, they all try to solve it. You know, at first by having meetings, forming communities, and those communities and those meetings are run by the effing lizards, man. They're run by the enemy. <laughs> Don't you understand? <laughs> you've been infiltrated. You've been co-opted. You've been compromised. They're in your groups. They're in your group therapy. They're in your get-togethers. They're in your conferences on human trafficking. They're there. They're running the show. That's why we need to go straight to the Lord. That's why we have 20 on 20, because we're going straight to the Lord with our, with our, with our, um, you know, with our, with, with, for redress here, because only the Lord can actually fix this. How many meetings? How people gone to over the last decade, and how much awareness has been brought to all this? Oh, quite a lot. Not that they've done anything wrong; they've done the right thing. It's just that you put any two people, any three people together, anywhere on anywhere on Earth, they will be infiltrated by a fourth, who will be one of them. Again, you could have the Tulip Society, and three of you are just pure-hearted Tulip people, but one of them will show up. Reminds me of Rich Keltner's song that, that I sang over called Infiltrator. I cannot sing in that high a voice anymore, folks, but I got way up there. It's about the infiltrator, infiltrating your, you know, you're infiltrating your, you know, your, your group, your, 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 they're in your family, they're in your schools, they're in your, in your employment, in whatever you do in life, they're there watching you. Connected, you know, all your data is going, you know, to them. And uh, that's where all that comes from, okay? So just, you know, I understand, you know, uh, I was, you'll be, well, you all might be happy to know this, but I was in a, it happened to me the other day. I was doing some shopping in another part of town where I don't usually go for, you know, not town, but out of town. I was out of town. To a grocery store to pick up a few supplies, which would seem you always have to do if you live rurally. You're always trying to get this or get that or get dog food or stock up on something. So, And uh, this is impossible. But the people there got in my way. On my way, on per- there was wherever I went, whatever I pushed the cart, they they got they came from out of nowhere to get right in front of me and block, so I couldn't. And then they wouldn't move. They they, they wouldn't move. No, oh, no, she she, you, you're not going out there right now. Get back there. No, nope, not gonna happen. So they wouldn't move. And 
you know, it happened once or twice. And I kind of wrote it off. You know what I mean? I said, oh, okay, there's a little bit of uh, frequency jamming here. You know, I, I get it. A little, little, you know, not anything too severe. But then it started happening at more of an epic pace. Like I'd be over by looking at a steak or something. And then, then I was just about ready to put one in my cart and you know this person go oh, excuse me i just want to see this and reaches across and then then i back the cart up i said okay i'll just wait and they never left and then it, it happened on everywhere i went and then i realized these people are doing this on purpose they're not even buying the the the, the anything for the meat thing or anything from the from the from the canned goods or anything from the they're not they're they're just getting in my way on purpose and trying to, you know, because they some they can't help it, and I see they're all connected, and they all know what they're doing. I just go, this is impossible under my breath. Okay, I said, okay, this is impossible. Okay, so this is not norm. This is something else. And then they wouldn't they wouldn't acknowledge that they were just demonic. But who was orchestrating them? How did they decide? Were they nodding and winking at each other? How did they decide to do this? And, and it got to the point where you just start laughing. And so it was so over the top. You know, that, that, you know, you know when people are bullying you, right? You know when, when it, they're acting like it's normal, but they're actually gaslighting you, they're bullying you, right? You know, yes? You know when they're doing the, the theatrical stuff. You know it. Okay, it happened full-blown. Now, you didn't hear me talk about it or complain about it, you know, but I dealt with it. Well, how do I deal with it? I know myself. I know my Lord, and I know my Lord's not going to let anything happen to me. So I just basically, you know, uh, I would do things like double back, and I, I, I got everything I wanted to get. I wasn't going to let them thwart me in any way, shape, or form. It eventually just went poof and evaporated. But uh, I guess Angie will, I could tell Angie was more, more than that market we were in, in in Hawaii, that she was there and Trish was there. We were in this market and they were doing the same thing to us. It was unbelievable. It got to the point where just, you just start laughing. It was even more than that. No problem, you know? No problem. I enjoy thwarting them. And then I went through the checkout and I was, you know, talking to the guy about stuff and running my mouth and, you know, see, they hate that. They want you to be scared and kind of like trying to get out of there and a little bit paranoid and, you know, you're just trying to get out of there and get to the car and just kind of get it over with. Uh Uh-uh, sorry. So back to their miserable hovels. Back to their misery. I am not going to have my day ruined by that. As to why they did it, it's, um, it's because they know who you are. You see what I mean? Well, how would they know that? Because it's in the spiritual realm. And then the people act accordingly, like little marionettes on the strings. The, the invisible witch being the puppet master, someone, someone in there orchestrating it with their mind. That's right, somebody, oh, I know who it was. It was this little old lady. I, I, I knew exactly, you know, she, she, she was blocking a certain thing and blocking an aisle so you couldn't even get down the aisle, but then had a little smile and, and there was no reason for her to be there. And she wasn't blocking me unless I wanted to go down that aisle. But that I saw that she was, she was, navigating all the other people. Like she had them on, she was the puppet mouse. She was the, the, you know, they were all her marionettes. And then it just suddenly ended and the people just dispersed. The victory was mine, as it all, always is. The defeat is theirs. So I would assume from that, somebody's going to be get a little slap on the wrist. Because that's what happens when they fail. If you succeed and you survive, and that includes poisonings, right? And you survive, some, somebody's head's going to roll. Somebody gets punished, okay? And, uh, you know, that's how they roll on their side of things. I, hey, I'm, I'm not a slave, man. I don't make that deal. You know, if that's what they got to do to make, uh, to, in their mind, to, to, to make it all work out, then I feel very, 
very, very, very sorry for them. I do not feel like I want to attack. I do not want to retaliate. You young friends out there, you youngins, you're not supposed to want to attack them. They don't know what they're doing. They're being controlled. Most of them don't even know what the game is. Some do. Most don't. They just act according to how they're being moved around. But if you look around when that happens, you know, because it's easy in a store, there'll always be somebody that will let you know in some weird way, a look, a glance, a little smile, and you'll see who's running it. And that will be a witch. Guaranteed. There's always one of them there. Could be a, a dude, too, who's also functioning as a witch. Yep. I always look, that's like the queen bee. I always look for the queen bee. When it starts happening, you know, they come in by your car on their bike and it looks like they're being menacing. And they, they, what, they're going to shoot you in your car, you know? There's always somebody in that parking lot, somebody, somebody around there who's not moving, who's simply running it like a little video game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, you know, the key is to freak you out. So if you don't get freaked out, then they get punished. That's all I can tell you. Because they feed off your adrenaline. They feed off your uh, paranoia. They feed off your uh, trauma. Or you're being triggered from the past thing. You know, many people are, they have so much trauma in their lives from being targeted so long. Things just that they almost become like shut. They can't do anything. They can't go anywhere because everything triggers them. That's what they want. And then, then you know, obviously, then if they can get you uh, in a vulnerable spot in a hospital in some kind of compromised position where they can kick you over the edge, kill you, have you kill yourself, whatever, then that's the, that's the end game. That's the, the, final, the final harvesting of the commodity that is the fallen human who doesn't understand. Now, I'm assuming that a lot of you guys are know all this stuff, so you're, and you're being fairly victorious by you know, leaning on the Lord and not on your own understanding, because your own understanding will fry your brain. So you're leaning on the Lord, and the Lord is battling it out for you. So why should you sweat? Well, sometimes you have to retreat. You know, we had to retreat out of Denver that one time. That was really rough. But we got it under control. You know, I mean, it's just, I accept that it doesn't, it's not always going to be a victory where you just stand there. Sometimes you can stand there and get your head blown off. I mean, you know, there are dangers out in the outside world, right? You could also be on the wrong plane, the wrong train, the wrong cab, the wrong this, the wrong city, the wrong corner, the wrong whatever, the wrong job, the wrong job interview, the wrong everything. And it's just, there's, you know... I think what a lot of us learn over time is to just kind of like, do you need to be, make a big show and be a show off? Not really. So you kind of keep your head down and not that you're scared of them, but you're just going to, you know, be reasonable, be a normal human, just trying to interact in a normal way. Whatever they do, that's their problem. If you just keep that separated like that, rather than, you know, but the, what they want to do is trigger you into, uh, you know, fear and running away and, you know, uh, you, you know, trying to film them and document it, that's not going to do any good. Uh, well, I guess, you know, there's been people that have been filmed and they, and they, they complain on YouTube. They go, you're, you're targeting me and, uh, you know, you're a perpetrator. And they go, no, I'm not. I've never done anything. You're just crazy. And then I see a lot of people in those kind of spats with their YouTubes. Right? You're not going to get anywhere fighting it out that way. You've got to have the faith in Jesus. You know, you've got to let God fight those battles because it's cosmic. You could fly from here to Kathmandu, okay? Get off the plane. It starts up again. And they, they might even know you by name and go, hey, Joe, you know, uh, welcome to Kathmandu, brother. <laughs> Do I know you? No. I, is your name Joe? I didn't know that. I just, you know. It's a big crowd of people here, you know, have, enjoy your stay, like we see you.
right? You know, there's like a Rajneesh following in India. Talking about targeting. Yeah, they were the, they were big time gang stalkers. Oh yeah, big time perps. Poisoning the food with with salmonella, like brushing it over the uh, salad bars and the various restaurants and stuff. Oh yeah, big time crooks, big time perps. And notice, the one running the whole thing was a witch. Yep, a Sheila woman. Had secret chambers for secret rituals. She had one like locked in hidden rooms where there'd be like a hot tub in there. There'd be nothing else. And her, her private hot tub in a hidden room that no one could find. That you had to have certain, you got to go through walls and, and move a door, you know, move things that, you know, f- f- painting out of the way. Or and then there's this hot tub. Oh, yeah. No, no, I wasn't thinking orgy. I was thinking blood. <laughs> I was thinking something else. Sure. She wanted people in there to kill people, to go, go into town and kill the opposition and or poison them. Total witch. Total witch. And she ran everything. Mm-hmm. She's the one with a smile on her face and lips, lipstick. Yep. Look around. You'll see her. Now she has an old folks home where, where people go to die and she assists them into death. Got a problem with that, folks? You got you see the connection? <laughs> right? Huh? Soul sucking? <laughs> Get that energy of that of that, that last breath of <laughs> sucking it up into death. Oh yes, and we provide for them and they can come here and they can feel comfortable and then they can they can just go to the great beyond and we make it very nice for them. We don't treat them Horribly, or like they do in these other homes, we don't abuse them. They give them a nice place to die. Mm-hmm. Interesting profession that woman chose to go into after getting out of federal prison uh, for crimes done in Oregon. Interesting, she would choose old people hospice and dying having a house so she could put these people there and rock them into death nothing wrong with that at all look how compassionate she's being uh, and anyone who crosses her of course you know it was like uh, you know poisoning a sense of one send an assassin whatever that that's basically from Everywhere in society that there's that kind of thing going on somewhere. And those are the dangers that are out there for people. And, you know, my thing is, uh, you know, you try to stay positive. You try to, you know, interact with people, meet them in a positive light. Because most people are not perps. Most people are not. Most people, I think, are are pretty decent people. Um, They may be compromised, though, and used. But in general, most people don't want trouble. They don't want to do evil. They certainly don't want any part of murdering people or hurting people. They feel imprisoned too, and they need help. And these are the people we try to reach, uh, with sometimes with being kind kindness rather than just meeting them with hostility. Or that oh, I, you're you're on the other side from me. You're going to try to kill me. No, you you try to meet them with kindness because you feel sorry for them, right? There, but for the grace of God, go I. You, know, you could have been that person. And then there's some that are earth dwellers that just, this is their home. They're never going to change. They're just like, you know, the rednecks or whatever. They're just going to be that way. Yeah, may I? Uh, I don't have any. I'm all, I don't know where I'm getting my energy from today. It's just, uh, it's just on, on, kind of on fire here. I think uh, you guys are, you know, praying for me earlier. And I thank you very much because I've, the prayer was not only answered, but answered times about to the 10th power. Answered to the 10th power. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. What's, I knew it. The Lord told me. Pray for James. James? Well, you're kidding. 
Okay, so we, we have prayers going out to, to, to James, Brother James uh, that he would have a full recovery, an instant recovery, a full healing in Jesus' name right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, that he'd have a conclusion in this matter and that we would all have a conclusion. Amen. Uh, I, I try to, you know, hospitals are not a good place for people like us. But uh, James, I think, will, I think he'll be okay. I, well, none of us is spring chickens anymore, folks, I guess. We are getting old, and one day you're going to have to say goodbye to me too, you know? We don't freak out when each other goes to the hospital because we're all kind of at the age where hospitals do come into play at times. I'm trying to warn about that, you know, if you can do it another way. But if you can't, I'm not saying don't go. I'm, you got to cover yourself in prayer. Uh, we just lost a, a friend here. And uh, I heard it from another guy that uh, I guess he's a, a targeted individual who's who's got the blood type issue, and he was putting out a PSA himself about hospitals, you know, trying, you know, this this kind of secret plan to get rid of the AB negatives, which, and the RH negatives in general, but in more specifically the ABs because, uh, because of, of the Jesus thing. What does it mean to me? No, it, it, it doesn't mean anything to me other than it means something to them. That's why I mentioned it, and it also answers as to why I'm interested in why I don't feel I really come from here, you know, which which I've wondered, you know, but I, I'm not, you know, I just don't feel a, a connection to fallen angels and to evil and to all I want is the Lord and to, to be a decent person, to, but also to use the gifts I have to, to help and if I can and uh, and hopefully leave it be a little better place when I leave. That's all. It's just come down to being a simple life, a simple man, simple, simple. I don't have any big goals. I don't, I don't want to be a cult leader. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, um, possibly, possibly I can be an example to younger people about how to not be intimidated. I think that that's probably my best help that I can offer is to, to, to show how not to be, uh, Well, you know, when you're intimidated, a lot of times you, you know, some of you are big, strong men. Your guys that you know, you're 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 you got ripped. Uh, you could kill each other in boxing matches, probably. But then when this stuff starts, you're like a little baby. You go running away. It's not because you're not tough. It's not because you're a coward. That's all BS. Let don't don't listen to that. It's because you were traumatized. You have PTSD. Okay, you have PTSD, and that's how they get that they turn big, strong men on the battlefield who can you know kill the whole battalion full of people by them with their bare hands. Okay, guys like that, if they get PTSD, they're going to have the same reaction. They're going to, you know, they could be weeping like a baby or running and hiding. Yes, it can happen. It's not your fault, and you're not a coward. You just got to get over that PTSD. You got to heal from that. Get over that trauma. Find your faith. So the next test, when it happens again, you're like, uh, it's, it's just a waste of your time to be in. Let, you know what my attitude is this these days is if, they, if it's important to them, let, them, let them have the steak. Maybe it's the last steak. I mean, I, I would literally, listen to this, I'd literally touch like some ribs, let's say, some beef ribs, you know. I put them back and then, then I'd be, you know, then I'd back off a little bit. Then these guys would come up, and they would take all the beef ribs so it was not an option anymore, right in front of me. <laughs> then they came back and put them back. They thought that I wanted them. Can you believe that? I didn't tell Trish about this. Wow. That was out at, uh, I'm not, <laughs> you were in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. See, I didn't even mention it to her. In the old days, though, I would have had the, you know, the, the being triggered. I would have been going, yeah, 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 oh, my God. You know, I would have had that reaction 20 years ago, maybe, 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. The other thing is Trish and I went up against uh, the hardcore in L.A. We, we were scared, but we, we would just act tough even if we weren't. You know what I mean? Sort of fake it. Uh-huh. Did we do that? In England. 
In England, we faked it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was awful. I started talking in gibberish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because we didn't know where a lot of it was coming from. We didn't understand, you know what I mean? And, and I've, I've got it all mapped out now, pretty much. And, you know, it goes, it goes to all those things we know are real. The occult, the witchcraft, you know, things, things like the pyramids, the all-seeing eye, the occult, Egyptian Book of the Dead, Tibetan Book of the Dead, you know, a lot of this, uh, you know, covens, uh, you know, these secret societies are basically covens like Golden Dawn and, and others. And all the, you know, the, the presidents and kings and bloodline elites and, and the secret uh, order that rules the world, the hidden hand, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you, you know, we poured through all that material, uh, you know, it, where, where we got a pretty good handle on where it comes from. But what they don't teach you in any of these books is how it works. You read about it theoretically, but that's not going to actually give you the skills you need to deal with it. And then when it starts going off, it's like most people freak out. It's like if I was sitting here, probably, probably you know, people see a yogi, a yogi might levitate, okay? And people see the, see the yogi levitate. Okay, the yogis like to do little magic tricks, like they like to levitate. And people, some people get afraid and run away. Uh, all right, I'm I'm about done, so you can let her out. All right, uh, she shoo shoo. Out you go. All right, well that was. You know, that's all I'm going to do on the the, the bloodline thing. I'm um, I kind of have my own path with that, and I, it's it's been a curse though too. It's been an awful. You know, I've I've never really. I mean, I've always been. You know, they always called me the God Mind. I was always kind of talking about the universe and God, and you know, some of you are like me in that way. You know, we're kind of like family here. You know, we recognize each other from the eternal. And uh, I've always been like when I was three years old, four years old, five years old, six, you know, even through those times of trauma and, and, and sexual abuse and all this kind of stuff, there was always that awe and wonder of the universe and different things. And, and I think, you know, and, and uh, really in a sense... I could say at long last, none of the things that happened really hurt me. In the sense that, I mean, you, you know, the interruptions, the path I was on, whatever, was pretty much all those steps guided by the Lord, meaning that uh, I might have reacted to something or not want to be somewhere or be somewhere else based on past traumas, you know, influencing my decisions. But those were the decisions the Lord had for me anyway. And when you finally realize it's all as it should be, and nothing was robbed, nothing was stolen. You know, it's, it's, it's what you were supposed to go through, and you did. There's a great deal of satisfaction that comes from that. And again, it's, it's like I say, I know people that are beholden to that beast. And even though I know they, they get mad at people like you and me and others, they get mad, you know, you, 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 all you want to do is help. You don't want to hurt them. Because you realize, you know, th that it's, you're not there to even, you don't want to make them feel bad. Uh, jealous? Yeah. Make them feel jealous of your freedom in the Lord, uh, that, that they could have the same thing as you? Um, sure. It's unlimited. You know what I'm, what I'm part of, the power that I'm a part of? It's unlimited, folks. I have unlimited power, and if you want unlimited power, you can have it too. And it's, it's equally unlimited. We have no hierarchy in the kingdom of God. Do you know that, right? There is no hierarchy. I mean, you could have the angels and the humans, and you could, I guess I suppose you could come up with one. But in, you know, who's really beloved or, you know, Abraham's more important than so-and-so. Than no. In the kingdom of God, 
There is no hierarchy. That's what people get so mad at it. They, they want a hierarchy. They want to have it over the other guy. They want to be up the ladder on the pyramid. We don't have a pyramid. We don't have a hierarchy. We are the throne of God. We are the light of God. We are Christ. We are the light. We are the I am. We are the throne of God. I am the throne of God. I'm in Christ. I'm in God. I am in God as God is in me. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, at the same time, there's a mystery to it, a paradox. I'm still me. God's still God, but I'm, there's no separation at the same time. And uh, if I'm th talking more about it, I, it, will, it will be very, very uh, unfortunate because, um, you know, our language does not, cannot, cannot describe the, the, the relationship of a human in Christ, in God. It cannot describe it. Because, you know, you diminish, he grows. It's all God, none of you. No, it's a little bit of you, more of God. It's, 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 no matter what I say, it will be unsatisfactory. So we just stop right now. We call that the mystery of Christ. The mystery of the living God. The mystery of mysteries. The unsolvable mystery, but yet within us it is already solved. Love it. Love it. We also call it the ineffable ineffable that means i cannot describe it it's the you know in in, in in when you read the uh some of the uh holy books of india and stuff they talk about the the ineffable the 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 uh this they have all kinds of words that are that are there's another word uh the effulgent meaning just glowing with power and light the 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 self uh the uh the prime self, the Brahman, the Atman, the, uh, all these things to describe God, the absolute supreme being, the most high God. The most high God, meaning the creator, the, the one. And uh, everything else basically doesn't really exist. I mean... You know, if it's not in him, it's not connected, then it's pretty much in the realm of fantasy that never happened. It's fantasy that you can think of, but then you never thought of it. You know, you were never here, you never thought of it, it never happened. The shed blood of Jesus, the path to the spirit where one is born again, Born again. Once you're born again, you're you're eternal. Even though you are a spirit being in a flesh body, before that uh, you're dead because the wages of sin are death. Now that's the truth. Try to avoid the celestial Jesus, the cosmic Jesus, the cosmic consciousness of Jesus. All those Jesuses, they don't believe in any hell or consequence to sin. You know. The wages of sin and death, a man must be born again, not of the flesh that dies, but of the spirit that lives. Right? Uh, therefore, we must be forgiven for our sins, or what? The wages of sin is death. The death of us, the death of the flesh, the death. So, you know, if the Lord provides that, Lord also provides protection from all the evils of the world. Protection, Psalm 23. Psalm 91, Psalm 23, protection and the recompense of the wicked who are coming after you. Look at Psalm 91. Everything you need to know about being persecuted and how the Lord deals with it is contained in Psalm 91 or Psalm 37. And you are in, you know, good stead with the Lord. This is uh, Zef Daniel here. We are uh, live doing a kind of a audio. What I like to do is uh, what I call audio verite. This is a conversation we were going to have on another show, I think. And now we're ending up doing it here because it's a lot easier for me to record. 
And so my guest, and I'm a guest of Rigo, but he's also a guest of me. And we're going to talk about gang stalking, gang stalking in Los Angeles and all the rest of it. Uh, welcome, Rigo. Uh, how, how are you? We'll just pick Hi. up. Hi. Uh, coming through nice. Well, la- I'll continue your. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say you forgot to say in the name of the most high. In the my gosh. You, thank you. My listeners, in the name of the Most High, greetings in the name of the Most High, absolutely, greetings in the name of Jesus, uh-huh. greetings in the name of uh, our Creator and uh, our Sustainer, uh-huh. our, the the one who guides us through in the in the in the spirit of Psalm twenty three. Thank you. Okay, so Rigo's my guest. Uh-huh. He's from Los Angeles, and I'm his guest too because he's really interviewing me. And so uh, we're just going to start talking from where we. Uh, Left off, and I was asking him. Yeah. I, I left off asking you, um, you know, about Los Angeles and about well, your how you kind of got to know, become familiar with gang stalking, and a little bit about your own story. Yeah. So I I've been here my whole life. I grew up in a place called uh, Pasadena, and it's uh, there's an orphanage there called Hillside's Home for Children. Mm-hmm. And I have been there since I was two years old. Uh, I was taken away from my mom. And I didn't go, I stayed in foster care until I was 18. So really, wow. my life was very, it was very, the gang that, that has gone all the way back since I was a, a baby. Really, I've mm-hmm. been experiencing this throughout my whole life, going uh, to middle school and then even worse in high school and so on. But I really had no clue about what was really going on. I, I just started to think, well, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to work harder. I've got to make more money. But nothing really hit the fan until I was about 20. 22 years old, and I was working for a company back then called Countrywide uh, Home Loans. Oh, yes. And I was living in an area called uh, Chatsworth. Mm-hmm. Now, I was staying off of, at that time, I was staying off of uh, DeSoto and uh, Topanga Canyon. Right. And I had um, my first, you know, this encounter was, I had this sort of strange nightmare where, I had um, woken up. Mm-hmm. Strangely enough, it was a dream about me being in bed, lying down asleep. So I dreamed basically that I was in my bed, and um, I woke up. Something said, look at the closet in my ear, like a whisper. Yeah. And I looked, and this fear came over me, so powerful. And then the moment I, I didn't see anything at the closet, my eyes looked right back and forward. And in a flash of a second, there was this bird in front of my face, a uh, Look like a crow. It's like a blackbird, and um, I was really scared. And it was very real. And I heard. I suddenly my my hearing it went to a tone where I the best way I can describe this: if you put your fingers over your ears, mm-hmm. I could hear my heartbeat. And it started beating slow. It, it started going bump, 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 and then uh, something happens where it was at the instant. As, like, oh, these are almost like frames of second. So it's like a frame of second, it was this black bird. And then uh, like another frame of second, that fast, it turned into, in my, there's no way to describe it, but it was a hand of a male. Mm-hmm. And uh, this confused me because it, it tried to uh, grab me. So I mm-hmm. used every bit of my strength. And then I heard my heart speed up and it went brrr, like a machine gun and I woke up. Oh. That was very scary. It didn't sound scary, but it was very scary. And it had a, a thing that I was never in. I love women. So I just, I was, I woke up thinking, how did that, how did I, I was confused for a while, for about a week. I was wandering around. Just I, I hadn't told anybody that fact of the story mm-hmm. for so long, for many years. But, you know, I was, I was just thinking, well, dreams come from you having these, so you must have some sort of thought, right? And uh, anyway, so I went back to work. Uh, that faded away. Um, slept with the lights on for a while. I went to, I, I met a girl and, um, I started seeing her mm-hmm. and I was visiting her after work and she, be, she became my girlfriend. And this was about a month or two after that dream. I, I, so I went to her house. She invited me to go meet her parent, her mom. And the first thing that happened was she sat me down with her mom and she said, Hey, uh, my mom wants to read you your cards. I was like, what, what cards? What are you talking about? And, um, I was not religious at the time. So I, I was just turned on the girl. So I didn't care about 
So her mom sat me down and um, pulled out this deck of cards. Yeah. And the cards, they didn't have anything on them. They looked like they were just photographs of just half men, half uh, animal things. So I thought, what a joke, right? Uh, but she took it serious. She no. sat me down, turned off all the lights, lit a bunch of candles. And oh, um, she started saying... You're terrifying that me. <laughs> she was... Yeah, she started saying that... Uh, she saw me in jail, and a black guy was going to get me out. She started spitting out all this, uh, what I thought it was nonsense. And I, I kind of laughed because I hadn't had much black friends, even though I'm black. I didn't have any black friends, especially any ones that would get me out of jail. No way. Yeah. Well, so that ended, and I thought, oh, that's weird. I could, I, I could live with that. And I, you know, I went with my girl at the time, and, and I said, all right, I'll just, she's, she's got a crazy grandmother. Well, I, wouldn't you know, three months later, I ended up in jail. And during that three months, I met somebody that worked for the county that was trying to get me a job as an intern. And so when I went to jail, the only number that I knew to call was the county number. And he picked up and he knew somebody that was able to let me off on early release. And he came and picked me up. I was out of jail within before 72 hours. And so that happened. And then I got out to the car. I hadn't realized it. But when I got out to the car, I said, oh, my gosh, I just went to jail and a black guy got me out. What a funny coincidence what that lady said, my girlfriend's mom at the time. Well, that type of thing happened. And then um, fast forward into the relationship about a year had gone by. And I started going to these parties that were going on uh, up and throughout um, Los Angeles. This is like South Los Angeles, Koreatown area. Mm -hmm. And they were all my girlfriend's supposed family uh, parties. And I would go there and notice that they were having, uh, a lot of animals would turn up dead. Um, mm -hmm. and they would say it was a mistake, but I, every time I would go to these parties, there's, there's dead dogs. There's mm -hmm. dogs that they were, you know, so I, I, that was another little weird quirk. And then the, the, the major thing was I'd go over to her mother's house and they had, you know, in this one moment, this, this is what really shook me. I went to her mother's um, uh, attic to go get a sh pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. And I saw in the attic the grandmother's stuff. And in this corner of the closet, she had all these candles lit. And there's this statue of this um, skeleton thing in a cape. And they call it um, La Santa Muerte. It's mm -hmm. some sort of thing that yeah. they pray to. They leave change and money. Uh, and um, I... Death saw apples on there and I, I, they were fresh. So I, somebody had been up there cutting apples and putting in front of this thing. Mm -hmm. I took the apple. I ate it. Um, oh, I went to the closet to get her sister's shoes and I saw an entire robe outfit. It was red and what looked like a witch hat from like the 1600s, but it was very nice. It wasn't costume. It was like made out of real leather. And I'm looking at this. So then I, I'm like, okay, I start looking around the room, you know, because I'm seeing all these things. I saw a mirror, and it had uh, taped pictures of all these different, look like, like young guys, like 17, 18 year old. And I found out later on, those were all her ex-boyfriends, but there must have been like 15 guys on this window and on this uh, mirror and writing on it and whatnot. Well, I came to a picture of myself on this thing. And somebody had poked out the eyes on it. So I had a photograph of myself that she had taken and cut it out to it's just me. And then there was eyes poked out of it. Like they poked needles out through the eyes of it. And I was hanging on a wall. So I went down there and I asked her about it. And she didn't even care about what I was saying. She was more interested. She was more upset. She's furious that I ate the apple. She said, I ate the apples. I was hungry. I went and got peanut butter out of the fridge. They were all yelling at me in Spanish. And everything just, to fast forward through all that, it just went to this whole other level of, of uh, oh hell. God. Because not only that, how old are, family. Uh, how, old are, that I, uh, how many years ago was this? This was in 2011, 2012. And uh, okay. And so then, I had, I, the whole family was, it, this is what I'm fast forwarding through all the, the, the satanic. There's tons of satanic. I've got to skip through some of it. But at the end, um, mm -hmm. what ended up happening is 
they were obsessed with trying to have a kid with me. I mean, the girl was on Google. I would catch her on Google typing in how to have a baby. How to, you know, we'd already been having relations unprotected, but she was obsessed with having a child. But what's more strange is the mother was twice as obsessed. Mm -hmm. And when they found out it was a boy, because they swore up and down, they didn't want a girl. I, I was more happy with the girl, but they were obsessed with having a boy. You had a pregnancy so then? When I, you, she got pregnant? Yes, and it was a boy. Yeah, and it was a boy. Are you married and to that, her? Are, are you married? No. So no. this was, what no. were we going to do with the baby? You, you were going to be the father, but where was the baby going to live? Well, I had a job. I was working at that, like I said, I was okay. working at country was making good money. So you're going to support the, yeah. the baby and the mother, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to do. Um, and I had a house and I had a car. Well, not a house, an apartment and a car and everything. But mm -hmm. what ended up happening was this string of events that were just hitting me day and night. Bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. Just every single day, you know, car crash, car wreck, uh, this, and there's, there's a factor of this where this, this fear thing would come in where I was, my hands, almost like I was an old man, and I would get near that woman, the mother's, the, the girlfriend's mother, and my hands, they would start shaking like an, like an old man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like I'm scared or something. I wasn't scared, but I was having like this spontaneous nervous wreck just being around her, something about it. And something I, about it's called, it's called generational witchcraft is what it is. So go, go ahead. Yeah, it's all. So, so Mark started showing up in my car. There was, they were in the form of a letter A, but they were out the bar. You know, it's almost like a cutout A. It was appearing on my keychain. She she called it into my car. Mm -hmm. uh, she burned it into me with a light. Just it, it was insane stuff. But my mind was focused on having a kid, having a family, trying to do this thing right because I had grown up in foster care. So what what at what ended up happening is the baby was born, and um. The moment the baby was born, she took off. It was about three weeks after the baby was born. And I had to deal with this whole uh, dramatic drama scheme. I had to deal with police. I had to deal with sub. Uh, she had all these, like, fake restraining orders with just out of thin air. Um, mm -hmm. But they would always fall because they were, they were not, they were totally false. And they would, but I'd still have to show up to court before five of these. And so um, they took off with the child and then, what happened is I tried to contact family members that I had met to all those parties. Remember I told you I went to these parties yeah, and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out that none of their names were their own names. They were borrowing each other's names. So they so wanted to get a, were, they wanted to get a baby and take the baby somewhere. Yes. And yes. where, where and did, I learned even more. Okay. Well, where did, where, so they took off. There's laws against that, mm -hmm. but I mean, what you're describing, I just want to sum it up, just take a pause right now, and then we're going to continue your story. I want to sum it up just briefly. Uh, what you're talking about is you were, you know, you had the foster care system, which obviously kind of, in a way, you you seem to have gotten through that. We, we don't have a, you haven't been telling a lot of stories about that or horror stories, but you got involved with witches mm -hmm. and witchcraft who were using you to produce a child and to brew, you know, and, and the pictures on the mirror, all those things are, um, mm -hmm. witchcraft. And, and what you're, what you're doing is you're slowly drawing a parallel between witchcraft and gang stalking. That's where this is going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so this is, this is, but I want you to understand you opened a lot of doors. Now, have you been through, uh, deliverance, uh, through Jesus Christ? Have you been washed clean by the blood of Jesus? Yeah, later on. Because that's that's really yeah, cause what I, you're describing. A lot of the people out there, they understand what you're saying, and a lot of the people out there are going. Maybe some people are going through it right now, just like you went through it. And I just want you to know mm -hmm. that the only antidote for all this is deliverance in the name of Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blood of Jesus breaks the witchcraft and breaks. Those are you have been cursed. You've been spells have been put on you. You've been manipulated for years. And um, mm -hmm. and then, of course, all the coincidences, all the coincidences, mm -hmm. which a lot of people that have gang stalking issues, what I love about this talk right now is you're linking the two, which I've been talking about for years, but great to have a personal testimony that does just that. Okay, Rigo is yeah. my guest, folks, and he's giving, um, I have to just get back to him and his story because he has a lot to say. He's just telling me what's yeah. led him up to where he is today, and he's having a kind of a tough time with this gang stalking and with the, these events and with um, 
all that. And I might even say, be, be, you were really an unwitting participant. I mean, you didn't know this was witchcraft and the, the mm-hmm. cards, and yeah. it just kept leading deeper and deeper into this uh, pit is where you went. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and there seems to be some sort of like thing drawing me, because I, I, I don't know how this deliverance thing worked at the time. I, I went to church and stuff, but church was not, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it, it, no what, what got it in the end was when I personally started reading the Bible, I started looking into it, right. and it took months. It wasn't just like some overnight thing you, right they, they, they say that you can go do. Exactly. So I, I went through months and months, and then before it got better, it got double, triple times at work. I mean, I could have just been dead, probably. Right. But I just, uh-huh. I just, you know, I would be sitting at a steakhouse, and I just suddenly would almost have a heart attack. Um. Mm-hmm. That that's how bad it was, but but I did got to get delivered, and throughout it I got delivered because here's the thing: they were not tra- they were uh, they were setting traps left and right, and I didn't know they were traps, and I would fall through every single time yeah. to the point where it's like they were just shocked that I was still, you know, every time it was like, come bring the diapers. There's gangbangers waiting to beat me up, cut me up. Well, well, what happened? The train died out. I didn't make it there on time. I made it late. They went home. Uh, you know, stuff like that would happen nonstop. Oh. And I was just like, that was the only part that was luck. And I realized that wasn't luck, that that was just God just kind of like protecting dangling you. me a few feet from the enemy. He's yeah, protecting, so protecting you and he's showing me. And he's teaching you and, and protecting you at the same time. Yeah. So at, at the end of it, at the end of my deliverance, um, when I, when I, I had changed, but before they had gotten out of the picture. So I was still, I was going back and forth. I was trying to find my son because suddenly about, I'd say about 15 to 20 people that said that they were her sisters, her brothers, her aunts, her cousins. Um, all of a sudden, everyone's last names were gone and changed. And I couldn't find anybody for almost a year. And then I found one person on Facebook under a different name, wow. clicked her, looked at her friend and saw, oh my God, that's her aunt. What is her name? Why is her name Reyes? And why is uh, her name Madrano? Why is her name Aries Mindy? Everybody's got these different names, and all their families you, and everything. You, you had I a, said, how did they do that? You had a whole coven, a whole group of people who were basically using you, and, and they, there's a reason they're using you, because you were innocent, and they're using you mm-hmm. to, to, pr- to provide whatever you're providing to, to create what they want to create, but they, they felt that they had a hook in you and that the, they could get you to do things and you'd do them and you'd fall through their traps. At the same time, it sounds to me like yeah. they, they wanted to sacrifice you to hurt you in the end. And yeah. uh, once you, whatever yeah. happened to those other boys, I'll bet you those, those guys on the, on the, on the mirror, a lot of them may be dead. Have you ever thought of that? I saw one of them, uh, t- uh, two of them, one of them went to jails and jail for life in another state. And I, I pulled up record. Yeah. And found out photographs years later after this that she had another child in another state yeah. and did the same thing and moved to this state. So it was like a repeat of what, what she did to another guy in another state. And I guess that guy went to jail. She took the child. But I ne- the weird thing about it is I never heard of this little girl. I've never seen her. And I mean, I was with my girlfriend for at that time for years, for, the, for about three to four years of this craziness. And never once did anybody mention this little girl or this little girl's name or a photograph. Nothing like that. Are the children dead? Are the children alive? I don't know. You have a baby out there. I never figured there. out what happened to the little girl. What happened to your son? He's still there. And I, because I've won in court, and I didn't win hardly anything, but I won the ability to have one or two visits a month. But I've got to drive all the way up to San Francisco from Los Angeles, so it just isn't happening. But that's been a way to put a placeholder. In other words, whatever she did to that little girl, this court system thing, this this thing that allows me to still see my son, it's put a hold or like a stop hold on her where she can't move out, she can't go any further. And it's, you know what I mean? It's stopped in place. Oh, God. I still didn't win my son, but I got out alive. And how did, in, 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 when we first talked, you were talking about gang stalking in Los Angeles. How did that become kind of like classical gang stalking? Now, all these people were playing, a, were role playing you, and they were all obviously connect, right. connected behind the scenes. They know each other. You know, this is a plan coming at you. You're the innocent victim. After all that left, after all that's been said and done, 
Then he talks about, you know, how that you've got this gang stalking and, you know, you'll be thinking something and someone will show up and start talking about it, someone you don't know. Uh, how, when, oh when, did, when, did yeah. you, when did you start noticing, even though all those witches were gone, all that witchcraft was gone, mm-hmm. you, you've been delivered, but now you still have these issues, what, a, what we might call gang stalking. Well, In a sense, the witches did gang stalk you, so... Well, they were. It was before I knew what was gang. All I could do was it right. took about it took about a whole year. As in the last year, I really stood back and I said, "How can this possibly be possible?" Because right. I didn't know what gang stalking was, but I was watching the cards fall into place, and I kept saying to myself, "It's as if they know everybody's in on it," but that can't possibly be because. Yeah. How do they talk to each other? And they don't know. No, they don't know. Yeah, exactly. They don't know each other. They're not connected that way, but they're connected another way. And it's and then there's another aspect to of it, which you're experiencing. And I'm going to try to help you now. Uh, that that part of it is it takes a bit of getting your mind around it, but it's it's like a dimensional shift happens. Then they seem to all be in on it, even though they don't know each other. It's impossible. Then it goes back to the way it was. Say. 24 hours later and um i yeah, think I, I, right i mean something something like that or something similar is what i just said go ahead i'm well i mean i'm seven, listening it's it, it, fast forwarding seven years now <sighs> now it's it's like you've been through hell then, i i i it took time i was very ignorant and i really wanted this like family thing to work out i was very ignorant and and so i so even after all of that I still tried to go to mediation, try to see my son, try to work things out with her. But I, yeah. I finally blew cords at the very end because I had, I had moving away from her. She had kicked me out of my home. I was homeless for a while. I got back on my feet. Right. I got a place in Long Beach. Good and I, I was like, okay, well, I can have her come over for a visit and have my son. I let her come over for one visit. She told me if I can go to Walmart and get some diapers. I went halfway and then realized that that Walmart had closed. I need to go get my car. So I came back to my house early, my apartment where my son was at, and she was supposed to be at for the visit, and she was already setting up candles and something red underneath my bed. Oh, and I, so I, I said, get the hell out. I, I kicked her out. That was the very last. That's it. But I was ignorant. So the witches, the witches, I was, right, they will laugh at you. That's right. Yeah, it's it's they terrible. They, they, I went over and I, what you're describing is pure hell on earth. Mm. I couldn't fight them back because it seems like it seems like the police officers that would come over the 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 yeah. law, the uh, the mediator the people at court they they were like doing they were just all in and even people that I brought as volunteers and That's stuff right. from my church they were like how can they just sit up here and cater to doing all these stuff for this girl she's got judges bending rules and doing illegal things and I got That's so right. bad I that I had the judge here in Los Angeles strike down orders from a judge in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. That's what she tried to run off with my son to. And the judge had, out of the blue, decided she was going to do something illegal for this girl. She gave her advice and did things when I wasn't even in court. And so I didn't know. And I was here in Los Angeles. So the judge here, she said, this this can't be done. This is illegal. She can't do it. So she called the other judge, and we're on the three-way, and she struck down the judge's orders to transfer... And, um, and it became a jurisdiction war, and finally Los Angeles won. So mm-hmm. I won that part, but I still have to, you know, go to, to out there to go see my son. Now going I back see. to the whole gang stalking part, um, I would plead with I would I would be going around these people, and um, w- once they changed their names and they changed everything, it's like they all of a sudden had these separate lives and they really didn't know each other. And so one day, one girl finally confirmed it for me. And she, she, she was a complete stranger. I met her once at one of these whole fake family party things that they all get together. Right. And by the way, they throw a giant fire in the back. They have these sure. huge houses you would never expect these poor Mexican people to have. They've got huge houses out in Chino Hills. Yeah. They go during and they get together and they've got all different kinds of people. They've got nurses. I saw army sergeants there. They've got, um, police officers. They've got all mm-hmm. these people that I thought were like this big loving family, lawyers and stuff, but they really weren't. They really don't know each other. I and so I, I went to this whole, this thing. And when they changed their names, this one girl told me, she, I found her years later on Facebook and she wrote me a message. She said, you know, Rico, I feel really bad. I feel really sorry. I feel like I screwed you. And I was like, what? I barely met you once. What do you mean? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and what do you, and she's like, well, I just, I feel, you know, really bad about what happened. And, uh, um, you know, maybe we could talk, we could sit down and oh I, can, no. I can talk with you over dinner. And she was going to tell me something. And then suddenly she had this epiphany the next day where she's like, I, I can't speak with you. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I've got, to, I've got too much to do. They reeled her back in. They, uh, let me just play by play here. They reeled her back in and threatened her that if she tells you anything, she could wind up dead. Okay. So next, keep going. Yeah. Keep going. So I was, I was so ignorant, and they were dropping hints to me. It wasn't just get where you go and sacrifice. And once I, once I started flipping past all these traps by, by mistake, and they saw how ignorant and stupid I was, but I was evo- evading all these professionally laid traps, they started to sort of try to like, I mean, the, the woman's mom, the, the witch, she said, um, Rigo, I want to help you. My God can help you. And this is my girlfriend's mom. <laughs> and so I knew, I was like, okay, this is on. Trying to, like trying to recruit me or something. Yeah, no, and they so can't kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would come with a baby, like, a, like the baby was like a, a weapon. And she would say, you know, I want you to see your son, we go, but you have to change. Oh, oh and, I, and I was still ignorant. I was, I was like thinking, well, I got to get a second job. I got to make one. I got to get an apartment, get a, get a, get a one bed. I got to get a car. So I'm like, okay, what I am. And I kept, she kept saying that over and over, over the months. And just, you've got to change. You have to, you're never going to change, are you? And I'm like... <laughs> So I, you know, I just never really got it. I was there was a block on me. I didn't get that she was. It was a recruitment. I thought it meant something like money, like a physical. And so oh, when that geez. never happened, I mean, she disappeared, and everybody disappeared. And um, my AFibs, my, oh. my nervous attacks went away, but she took my son. Yeah. How, how many? Uh, uh, I couldn't hold up that. for a sec, Rigo. My guest here is my guest. I guess you're my guest now. Our guest. Uh, Rigo from Los yeah. Angeles, and and we were having a conversation about uh, his testimony, his experience. How many of you out there are just like <laughs> you know exactly what I'm thinking, right? How many of you out there are just understanding what he's saying exactly and, and going, "Oh my God!" How many? Huh? Everybody? Everybody understand what we're talking about? I don't need to. There's no editorialization. I can't keep up with him. He's going, uh, he needs to get all this out. So uh, how many out there understand what's, yeah. ha- what's happening? Trish, how many in the uh, people are kind of going, yeah, I understand. Just curious, Trish. Trish. Okay, never mind. Uh, Trish has her headphones on. <laughs> she's at the other, she's, she, we're manning different areas of this thing. Okay, so. Basically, let me just, um, let me surmise it. Every one of my listeners or our listeners or our family out there, our, our folks, they all <clears throat> um, understand what you're saying. So we're not going to explain it mm-hmm. uh, to people. We're just, mm-hmm. just going to have you go on because you are very eloquent. You are just blowing my mind with this story because it's so, it's just so. I know it's. Crazy, no, no, no! It's not. Cra- no, no! Stop! It's not it's crazy. Get worse. It's no, get way worse. it's perfect. It's it's you're 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 articulating it perfectly, and I don't want to interrupt. I just want to have to pause for one sec to catch my breath, and then okay, go ahead, Rigo. Rigo will continue with the, the, his uh, testimony, which is just absolute absolute a nightmare. So please continue, sir. So. um Something, something along the way had happened with the, with the mother. Um, I was saying to myself, well, they're doing all these bad things. With them. They'll never get away with this. I mean, there's, there's going to be some karma. And to my amazement throughout the whole thing, yeah. they were just so prosperous. They just kept winning and winning. And I thought, you know, throughout my whole life, if I, did, if I stole a candy bar, I would get, the next month, I would get robbed from my bicycle. There was no, there's no oh, leniency. Right. And so when I saw this happening, I, I thought, I saw this as like a huge slap in the face. And I, and I, but what I eventually had to do, because my son became a weapon for her. And every time I would see him or see her, I would start going into this nervous, like, this thing was really bad. It feels like having a heart attack. Um, and even going to the court case, just going to the courts with her would be like going to the courts with like a 20,000 pound demon, but basically a, a, a girl that's basically 120 pounds. That is very easy to over. So I, I was dealing with this situation where I, you know, my, 
I had to separate myself. I found God, sort of. I, I started reading the Bible and stuff. Um, there was this old guy. He uh, came up to me, and he was a part of this homeless rescue team or whatever. He introduced me to the church. I started going to church with him, mm-hmm. and this thing started to wind down. Okay, I, I didn't see my son anymore, um, but the attacks went away. But, but, and I started working a job. Things got back on my feet. Yeah. And um, so that went out the door. And, 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 but before that, that calmness, before I got through that nervousness, um, mm-hmm. I was lying in bed. And I got hit with two more of those type of dreams where it was, it was enough to scare a grown man. But I was lying in bed in my, my apartment in Long Beach, and this, this was not a dream. There, it, it was a dream, but it was a, it, it, it's hard to... There was this orb of light, right, in my, in my room. I was having this dream of something grabbing me by the feet. And swinging me around like you would, like if you would see a man with a child playing at the park, sort of yeah, no, in a sandbox, and you grab yeah. the child by his feet. Mm-hmm. Something had me like that, and I, the realness of it, I felt the G force, like blood rushing to my head, and it was swinging me around and around and around. And I kept saying, um, "The blood of Jesus, God, the blood of Jesus." Yeah, same. Um, and eventually, it stopped. And the moment that that stopped, and I opened my eyes. There was an or- or orange ball of light in the room. No way it could happen. It's completely impossible. Um, it's completely crazy. We know but the orbs. I, I, we know, yeah. It was there for a second. It vanished. It like exploded out into nothingness. And I got up. I flipped the lights on. I started looking around. There's no smoke detector. There's no windows open. There's nothing. Very bright explosion of light like a camera flash. And then the, the, the other one was... Um, the other one was me in this room, in my, you know, lying down, and again, um, I'm in bed, stuck, can't move, and these happened months apart. It wasn't back to back. So I'm in bed, I'm stuck, I can't move, and all of a sudden, again, this intense, crazy fear comes over me. This, um, what I'm describing, it's like a dark shadow, it's like, it was like dark mist or smoke or something. It's like a darkness came in the room. And all I can way to describe it is it was absorbing the light because I, bizarrely enough, had a dream I was sleeping in my room in the exact position, everything perfectly, but the light was on. This dark thing came in. It absorbed the light. The light started to fade, and this something told me, if I don't get out of this before that light completely dies out, it's like a fear. And so, I again, in my mind, I trained myself to say God or Jesus or something, and I tried to say God, and I got choked. Like, I tried to say God, and I went, gut. It got choked. Three times. Mm-hmm. A second time, and the third time I woke up. But I knew that there, it just, it couldn't be normal. And, it, and then after that, for, for a good year, two years, it all went away. I stayed away from, I moved out of that apartment. Uh, I moved to Orange County. I've worked a job for, for the past three to four years. Everything's smooth. Hardly see my son uh, once or twice. Um... But I've been healed to some extent. A very small amount of me has been healed. I don't have those attacks. I don't have nervous breakdowns anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, let me, so let, yeah, the, the story the, picks the, back up. The orbs are, are witches. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're spying on you. <clears throat> and, yeah, I used to wonder. I, I, <laughs> I, I went to work for this company in Orange County, and I would get very few calls from my ex, the girlfriend with my son. When she would call, it would be like this. I would be working at a company for two years. Everything would be perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden, there was three girls at this job that decided they were going to try to pick me off my job, who I hardly knew. And they were going over the, over the top and just like comedic stuff. Like, you know, he was staring at me sexually. Just, just, just outrageous stuff. And do so those I, girls, you know, th- th- those women, do they know each other? No, they they, they, they don't they the, at work. Got it. But nice. you know, not not well enough. You know what I mean? It was a black woman, it was an Asian woman, and a, a Vietnamese woman. Well, and they at were least we have together. D- diver- and, we got diversity here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> wow. So they they try to get me fired, and then they have this hearing and say, "Well, was we go staring at this girl sexually?" And then why were these other two girls involved in saying? 
And then they said I was, well, I was cheating. I, well, they all got different points of ways to get me fired. And then they, they came back with the HR and they said, you know what? Regal has it. He has proof of other people and he, he hasn't done these things. He's not fired. And we're writing you guys up for, they wrote them up instead for, for making right. stuff up, even though they should have been fired. Right. But the strangely enough thing that happened is after that day, I went home and received a phone call from, mm -hmm. knock on wood, my ex. And what did she say to me? How's work going? I see. Everything going fine? Okay, so this, said, are you considering this to be gang stalking, what we're talking about now? At this stage? I don't it, think that's gang, no, that, the gang stalking didn't come till, till later. So later, okay, because so this is still, this is like, this is witchcraft. And the use of the hive mind, in other words, this witch, this woman that has your son is throwing spells, and other people are yeah. part of that hive, they're part of that hierarchy, that hive, and they act it out. Uh, they may not even know who your, you know, ex-wife is, it doesn't matter, that's just that, that kind of, you know, they're able to do, and like you said, now let's go back for a second, when you talked about these giant houses where there are, you know, more or less prominent people, you said there are these Yeah, the Chino. Out in Chino, and they, how can mm -hmm. they have these houses? They're just yeah. poor, poor Mexican immigrants, or whatever you were saying. And here they are yeah. having these huge houses, and all the manner of people, kind of prominent people, people that should not know each other, people that should not be socializing together. All of them seem to mm -hmm. also be partaking, including police, including uh, you know the sheriff, including other people in this thing that has people changing their identities. This whole sub. Terranean civilization that's going on, but when you try to check on it, now I'm adding this, when you try to, to figure out what it is and who they are, you can't seem to, to, to figure it out, right? You can't seem to follow it. Though all these people the seem... are cut. Dead ends. They, they all seem to be in on it, and they'll show up at this ritual where, you, you know, unfortunately we have animals being sacrificed. Uh, we don't have humans mm -hmm. that you know of being sacrificed. Are there humans being sacrificed? In these, in, in these. No, but I, I saw all these kids. That's the other kids. Thing. Okay, so kids. what? What about the kids? Yeah, and I didn't find out who their parents. Like, they okay. all had oh, God. caregivers, and I thought that was normal growing up in foster care. But when I look on it, it's almost like that was a cover because it's like they didn't have any license to be foster parents. These kids I weren't see. really legal. They weren't. They didn't have any real paperwork. They all call each other sisters, but they're. You know, we've got a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, a ten-year-old, and they're all saying with such and such that knows my girlfriend. They're being trafficked. They're and being, then when my kid got taken, right. yeah. They're being trafficked. Okay. All the, so we now have child trafficking. Right. So we got all that going on. So we're assuming that also involves sex with kids and all the rest of that, plus possibly mm -hmm. death or murder, but you don't know about any murders, right? No, there okay. was all these, no murders, there was all these relationships that were, were they sounded and looked professional, but then they were actually personal. I, I'll give you an, an instance. The, the, the girl's mother, the, the brother, uh, her uh, mm -hmm. son, so this is the son of, of this sister, so I guess it would be a nephew. He had a problem with, I guess, going out, party alcohol, he was like, maybe he was about... Uh, I think it was about 14, 13 or 14 at the time. And so, you know, I would be over there trying, you know, before everything got crazy and I was still visiting my girlfriend, I would go over there and see that boy with a social worker is what I thought. And he was indeed working for the county, the uh, Department of Ch Children and Family Services. I well, see. when I found out later is that guy was having a relationship with that boy in a sexual manner. Right. And the mother and everybody seems like, they were okay with it. They sort of argued with it, but it was way under, it was more like, it was like, yeah, you know, Brian said that guy tried to, you know, the social worker, they were, you know, kissing, that guy tried to kiss him, and the mother was like, well, mm -hmm. you know what, you stay out of his business, it's not, you know, I, he shouldn't be doing that, but mm -hmm. that's definitely not for you to be throwing out there, you don't want to embarrass oh, I, no, no, that's, it's, Instead it's, of calling the police, you don't want to embarrass the boy. Hard He's having a relationship with like a 60-year-old Okay, so you, you stumbled into, into the multi-dimensional and, and layered kind of reality where you have people without names that lead anywhere. They're part of this witchcraft mm -hmm. thing. There's children being trafficked with sex with adults. 
And uh, I could just tell you there's also the rest of it there, too. I mean, b- babies, murders, you know, whatever you're not seeing. But they're playing tricks on you. Uh, and it goes all the way to the top, to the judges. It goes all the way down, you know, to these uh, very high-level corrupt people. And they're playing tricks with your mind mm-hmm. and playing tri- they're playing tricks with you, setting traps that you somehow survived. Mm-hmm. So then they started thinking, well, mm-hmm. maybe we should recruit him because you survived those obvious yeah. traps that should have taken you out. And so they figured maybe there's yeah. some, some power there. Maybe he needs, and then you weren't exactly understanding what was happening at the time. So you're not really recruitable. And so now here we are with this, uh, this standoff between Rigo and the, uh, LA gang stalking, uh, witchcraft scene, if you will, for lack of a better way of framing it. Okay. Now what year are we in now? What year is it We're now? We're now in 2000, and this is the ending of 2014. 2014. So, okay, so we're coming up now to when the gang stalking start. The gang stalking started, obviously. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, instantaneously, this is the first gang stalking thing I can think of, because there's no way that they could all contact each other. But as I started to, like a detective, look for my son and everything, mm-hmm. to try and figure out where she I'm, in court instantaneously every single person that i had associated with her facebook and they were friends and had photographs and these backyard parties were all family hey ha 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 all gone i'm talking 15 to 20 people on facebook and all of a sudden there is no sign no photograph right. no connection no name to right. this person everything gone <laughs> exactly and it's like you know it's like what person uh, exactly hey, athena? who who's athena Perfect. And even more bizarre is 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 she doesn't seem to be she. It, there's things that we did that she, she. It's like, yeah, back when we did this and that, and it's and and she's what? What are you talking? When who's that? They don't even the my girlfriend is not the the ex girlfriend. It's not the same. There's something that happens. We're you, she, we're talking about a, a seven, a tw- eighteen, nineteen year old didn't pass call, didn't get out of high school. Uh, uh, backed up in credits, not very, not, you know, just in, in after school programs and stuff, all of a sudden becoming in super intelligent, almost like a l- wicked lawyer or something. Just gotcha. intelligence from somewhere else. Uh, no memories of, of past things that we did together. Just they're like haze, you know, things that should be like, oh, yes, I remember that. Oh, yeah, that happened. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not there. So I don't know how to explain that. That's not gang stalking, that's something else. But uh, the gang stalking yeah. is. Everybody suddenly deleted all at once when I was going for this court case. Just every evidence and shred of where she was at, all of a sudden gone. Okay, everybody that was family and friends, all of a sudden their names, Perez, uh, Garcia, um, uh, Arizmendi, Madrano, and Reyes, all those family names of about 20 people, all gone. Right. All switched over. And when I found them all again, their names were Carlos, uh, different, all different names. Different. It's just so. It's so bizarre. And so I had to, like you said, I was fighting something that was so much bigger than me. Even though it seemed to me like it was Jeez. just me fighting for my son, it was an entire. It was way more bigger than me. I had to just back off. Right. I had right. to back off. Let them take my son and just hold on to that visit thing as a form of right. sort of like a way to to keep it on the line to keep the fish hooked. So I, I stepped away, and then the gang stalking kicked back up two, two to three years later, which I'm talking about last uh, 2016. Okay. It, I was, you know, here we are, 2016. I'm working a job now. I'm at this company uh, uh, in San Bernardino. Don't uh, have to mention that. Don't, don't, no, don't men- mention that. Please don't mention the company. You don't okay, have to. I won't mention the whole name, not the whole name. You don't have to do that. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. So I'm working out there, and I'm working as a, a loss mitigation specialist for mortgage home loans. And um, I see this ad on the internet, and it's, I mean, it's not an ad, it's a, it was a commercial, because I, I used to listen to a lot of the Alex Jones shows in the morning and stuff, so mm-hmm. commercial pops on, and then this, this YouTube says, you know, hey, Mandela Effect, uh, what did Darth Vader say? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Luke, I'm your father. Okay. So yes. I go, and I'm like, wow, you know, it says, no, I am your father. So I was like, that blew my mind. I start searching on videos, and, and so I go home and I check VHS, and my VHS says it now, and or the old VHS that I had to go back to my old orphan. So I go to my job over the next couple of days, and I speak with my C 
CEO the uh, uh, of the company, who's it's very cool. So it's not big. It's a pretty small company. And we're in the restroom, right? I was using the restroom, and uh, I finished the star. I go to wash my hands. The guy's there. And I say, hey, man, you know, you're a big Star Wars fan. You got all this. You got Star Wars things on your, you know, computer in your office and stuff. You're a big fan. What did Darth Vader say <sighs> to uh, Luke Scott? You know, it's his famous line from the original Star Wars. So, uh, he goes, up. Uh, Luke, I'm your father. I was like, I'm about to show you something. He goes, he goes, and remember this. He go, remember this. What he says. He says, "Are you ready?" Uh, he's, you know, he says, uh, "Okay, blow my mind. What are you going to show me?" Okay, okay, okay. I show him the photograph, the uh, video, and and of it changed. And I was expecting him to say, "Wow, that's crazy. No way." But instead, I saw this face, like I can never forget. Like he just went to. Like he got busted stealing. It was like he got caught doing something. And he looked at me with his face and got real quiet. And he walked out without another word. And he went into his, his office. And over the next couple of weeks, he didn't look at me, didn't say anything to me. And within about a week after that, I was fired for no reason. Which I wasn't mm-hmm. complaining because I, had, no. I started digging into this subject and noticing things. And so I was preoccupied. I wasn't caring about it. Any, now that stuff didn't matter to me all of a sudden. I was going outside. I was seeing the sun. The, 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 the color of it was like a white star. It went white, yeah. And I thought, it went oh, white. Back then it went white. Yeah. And we all noticed that, yeah. Yeah, and then it faded back into orange. But, I mean, I, I walked outside that building that day that I got fired, looked up in the sky, and saw this huge, something you would see like in a sci-fi film from the 90s. Just mm-hmm. giant white dwarf looking thing. And so I went home, I started telling my girlfriend about this, and wouldn't you know, just the, the, what, what, the, the, out, the, I couldn't expect to get sprayed in the face with mace, or, 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 or the, the reactions are all wrong, you know what I mean, right, they're right, so right, angry, right. they're all overrated, how could you get that mad? So, okay, so I stay away from my girlfriend. Are you head. saying that your girlfriend, ma- maced, she maced you in the face when you got home for no reason? Yeah. Burned and choked for about a half an hour, and and didn't sh- and not even a word. Just back to playing Candy Crush. Mm-hmm. Not a word. Okay, just- <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know if I could handle what you're going through. I, I this just sounds like the Mandela effect now is causing some kind of stalking or some kind of alternate reality to kick in that doesn't that where people's reactions and the things they're doing don't make sense to the to the context of the situation. Which I, I fully understand. No, it doesn't. Okay. And now, now here's the part that's really going to blow your mind. Okay, go ahead. Because you're gonna, you're going, you're going. My to, mind's already blown. who's even? My mind's already blown. If there's from, even part of us, <laughs> you, you're going to think I'm super nuts when I tell you this. No, okay? I, I actually don't so think I you're had, crazy at all. I had this Jehovah's Witness that used to come and uh, read Bibles to me. They started doing it for almost a year. Mm-hmm. And I thought this would be good because I'm fighting off this evil, wicked, you know, and I need to get yeah. myself in right with God. So I'm having these Jehovah's Witness come over every week for about a year mm-hmm. um, and just coming over every Sunday or at, in their car. And we'd study in their van the, the Word of God, right? Yeah. So. Except it's not, um, not exactly the Word of God. I tell them about this. Yeah, I, I, I bring up the Mandela effect and I bring up a change in my Bible or a change, and, and I, a change in the Bible, okay? And I w- they were reading. Uh, a, a verse in my Bible, and they laughed. And this is a personal Bible that was given to me by John, the older guy that I told you helped me when I was homeless out of my situation. So it was, my name is printed on this Bible, okay? There's no mistaking it. They pick it up, they read it, they read a verse in there, and the verse says this, okay? I remember it, I don't even have to open my Bible. It said, neither do we put new uh, wine in the old, into old bottles, bottles, else the bottles break. So they laugh and giggle at that. Exactly. And they say, your Bible is in this. See, this is a bad translation. So they pull out their Bible, and they're like, give me one of theirs. And so I take both mine and theirs home that day. And you're like, you know, ours is the correct version, whatever, right? So mistakenly, the next time they come, the next week, I take my Bible, forget to bring theirs, right? I get in the van, I open it up, and I, I can even curse right now. But I'm telling you, the, the words that said, and neither do we, it's, it now said, Neither do we put new wine into old wineskins, or right. else the wine would burst Ferment, yeah. from the pressure. Correct, which it would okay? do. Does not, that, that, 
Right. Yeah, Th- that, that is the correct. That's the, the way Bible that- it used to be that way in the uh, the King James was we don't put new wine into old wineskins because the wineskins could burst. Then during the Mandela effect time, it changed to we don't put new wine into old wine bottles. Well, if you put new wine into old wine bottles, nothing is going to happen to the bottle. So the, the verse doesn't even make sense. OK, right. So well, then it said, and then it also had the extra thing, the pressure. That was, you know what I mean? The pressure. So I, I knew. <laughs> the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. From the pressure. Well, that's the yes, first. The f- and it, that's f- exactly what it said. From, it said, or else. It didn't even have the else. It said, or else the wine would burst from the pressure. Right. So now I, I showed it to them. I'm like, I, I freaked out at this point. Because that, the first thing that it had, I opened that Bible up. It, the heavens had lost the S and it said heaven. And then it said the pressure, and it changed back from it changed from wine it's w- bottles to wine skins. And I showed it to him. I said, "Look, guys, just from last week, look." And I again, the reaction they didn't say you're crazy. They didn't say it's, it's the wrong Bible. They just said, "Well, it doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about it no more." Right, the because they're the, the God. yeah, and, they're not the same people. You see, they may well, have not the same. That the, I figured out something. Mm-hmm. They were preaching to me for a very long time to stop using the name of Jesus. And they wanted me to use the name of Michael. And Amen, it didn't right. make sense to me. Like, they, they would get so upset. Yes. So then I figured out that, I was like, okay, what about, what is this whole Jehovah? There's some sort of, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Exactly, it's it's, it's basically, a, about- yeah, it's another plot. It's, it's just trying to take the divinity of mm-hmm. Je- Jesus away. It takes the God, uh, had the... Uh, it takes the, uh, like I say, the, the, you know, before Abraham was, I am, that, that aspect of Jesus, it takes that away. And so Jesus is now, yeah. now like your brother, you know what I mean? You're following your brother around. And, and so it, therefore, uh, the religion is in, invalid because it, uh, it, it, it breaks the, the primary, um, aspect of, uh, God by mischaracterizing who God is, and and therefore it's it's not valid. Yeah. Okay, now let me get to this. Okay, so through the Mandela effect, is are you saying and they never showed up again? I just want to add that. Well, we they never chased up again. you they know. Yeah, and, we're gone. Uh, go back to some old Zephyr reports, Trisha. You know, we had them over as well, and in, in, in the nineties. I mean, it's a long time ago. But I remember one guy came over. You know, in, when we lived in Hollywood, we lived in in in. Uh, in West Hollywood, and this guy comes over from, you know, with the, the Mormons do the same thing. They bring the Book of Mormon, right? And so he comes mm-hmm. over, and, yeah. and, and I'm, at that time, I'm going through the cold gangs. I'm, I'm completely messed up in L.A. And uh, I, it's, it's mm-hmm. yeah, the stuff comes out of the woodwork, all these supernatural events that are just impossible. And then, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm wanting the fellowship with this guy. And so I said, you know, I'm lonely, too, because I feel like I'm isolated, even though I'm living mm-hmm. around millions of people. And, um, you know, so it, at some point he wanted to get up and he ran. He literally ran down the street away from me like I had the plague. And um, <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, and, and so I'm starting to think I'm this freak. And, you know, and I mean, Trish and I are together at this time. This is going into the mid to late nineties. And then eventually we just understood that we, you know, we, we really, LA had changed. You know, it wasn't the place that we knew anymore. It was every single thing on every corner, every retail shop, every restaurant, no matter where we went, Uh the game was going on. Okay. We just couldn't handle it. We just couldn't stand it. But anyway, when did you notice, well, yeah. R- Rigo? My guest is Rigo, folks, and you're tuning in live. Um, I'm not editorializing his testimony because he's doing a great, great job of laying this out. Now, let me just ask you a question, and that question is, okay, so with respect to what you know about gang stalking and, say, even electronic harassment, people showing up and, you know, messing with you in various ways— and its connection, I guess, to the Mandela effect is what you're saying. It's kind of connected to that because you seem to be with your rea- reaction with your reaction to the Mandela effect. They seem to be, in a sense, turning into different kinds of people. Uh, they, they, I, I understand it's, it's very frightening. Now, uh, okay, so what happens next? Go ahead. So I was starting to see that my rea- first of all, my reality is there's something. I was very scared. Um, in 2016, 
from that whole thing because I just saw something that couldn't happen. It, there's no way a book can change its writing and the page, you know, it's just no way. And then the reaction, there's no way that's impossible. Um, there was instances where I would go out at night and um, for a whole, almost like two weeks, there was, it was just pitch black, no moon. There was a, 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 a separate time where I was driving on the uh, five freeway south heading past Disneyland. There was a giant yellow moonish, and it was huge. And then I looked down and changed my radio station to 94.7 away and look up and in that few two to three seconds it had just vanished and I'm driving on the freeway like I'm in hell or something. It's just pitch black and I'm looking around other people driving thinking, do they, do they just notice that the thing, it's like somebody just cut out the lights here and everybody just drives normal and then finally 15, 20 minutes further down the five, I start hitting Irvine. I see it reappear. It's very small up in the sky, white moon and that's, and, and that's not part of the, the whole gang stalking. They, they, this is stuff that I was experiencing too. I'm thinking like, right. am I dead or something? And so the, finally, the, right, the part of game right, right. No, no, we thought that I went out. Uh, that we've all had that thought: are we, are we dead? And then this is that we're in this afterlife reality here. Did something happen and we all died? But go ahead, please continue. Well, God told me, and through another person, it was actually a listener of yours. It's strange because he's brought your name up, but <laughs> I know that that's not the case. No, uh, and I said I won't go there. But he, he did call me up and and told me something that happened to him, and I was like, okay. So it's not that. That's not what it is. Yeah. But I, so I decided I was like going to go out and experiment with this Mandela effect thing because I said, oh, that's two people that's had, the, three people that have the reaction. You know, the church guy, the guy at work, and my girlfriend. So I go to, um, by the beach, by Venice. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to people and asking this question. And all of a sudden, 15 to 20 people of different race and, and ethnic background right. have started saying the same exact thing with just different voices and different, different, uh, 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 God, what is the word for it? The different dialect. Is that, what is it? Hmm. The point is it was different people and they were just saying, well, there's nothing you could do about it. There's right. You could do about right, it. Right, right, like, no right. dog, there ain't nothing you could do about it, dog. It's no, like, it's like they're from outer space. Like, oh. It's like invasion of the body snatchers. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like they're from outer space. <laughs> now here, here they are, and they're all just programmed to say the same thing. So I'm with, I'm with I you. Went go ahead. 20, how could you do that? How could you go to a Chinese person and ask him this question? How can twenty people in a row, just all of them, there's nothing you could do about it? Well, there's nothing you could do about it, my friend. Yo, dog, there ain't nothing you could do, son. That's it. <laughs> and I'm just like, I like the no co way, colloquialism. Right? No way. Yeah, dog, there's nothing you could do yeah, about I, it. <laughs> I, go yeah, ahead. Uh, go, uh, so I feel like Los I'm, now I'm like, okay. I'm thinking that these are these are these are demons or something. There's something told me that they're right. that these people are like they're, they're they're they are childish and they try to they don't. They're not Hollywood demons. Come out and kill you. They're 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 like pick at you. Um, uh, you're on the phone, and all of a sudden they just want to blast their music and start. You know, so yeah. you can't say what you're going to say. There you go. It's something important. There you, you know, go. The ambulance comes on. Uh, I went and started waking up this girl, and I couldn't believe it because at this point nobody around me could. So there's this one girl who's like, you know, with this this guy, this friend of mine. His name was Joey, yeah. and this guy Joey was my roommate, mm. and he was. One of them, and he, 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 he. It's like he, he, he understood everything I said, but something happened. He started yeah. to do this thing with his eyes and his face, and I said, "I've seen that before on another person do the exact same thing, like he's acting." And the next day, it's all gone. He couldn't even remember what we talked it's about. Back, it's back. Exactly. That was, You're hitting it. You're hitting it out of the ballpark. Go ahead. He he told me something that was blatantly. Uh, it was not normal. He he said, "Well, I." told my mom about it and she told me to shut the f up so i'm like mm -hmm. what They're, she doesn't they, want him mom would tell you to shut the f because up because she knows what he's for, for talking about a monopoly man because she knows what's going on yeah i'm like how and he knew i was going he knew exactly what was going on because i got in the car with him a month later and we're driving and he's got his this girl his, his i have a girlfriend the girl's kind of sleazy or whatever but she's good-hearted and um, I was telling her about it while we were in the car together. It's me and him and her. And we're driving up Wilshire Boulevard towards Westlake, MacArthur Park. Uh, and gotcha. um, he all of a sudden, I'm telling her, she's like, what? She's looking at all these different things that have changed. 
She's like, she, I'm like, you're not going to believe it, but don't. People aren't going to. She's like, I'm going to tell my mom. She calls her mom. We're in the car with Joey. Her mom says, oh, yeah, that's fine or whatever. She, so she got shocked. She's like, mom, how come you're acting like this? You shouldn't you be doing something? You're not. This is not normal. She says, her mom said, I got to go. So she started crying. So she stopped. She started talking to me again. And then all of a sudden, here comes Joey. And he kept cutting me off. And he kept getting phone calls. And he kept messing with the radio, trying to stop me from telling her what was happening about it and, and the connection. So, I mean, that guy was gone. You're describing the demonic aspect of gang stalking and, and you know, literal gang stalking, bullying, and the people that are from some, they're, they're your friend, then they're not, and then they are the next day with no memory of what really happened and they don't know what you're talking about, that all of a sudden they do know and they're trying to stop you from being able to tell somebody else. Yeah. And they, you know, it's, 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 it's impossible. But the moment that Joey got out of the picture, I kicked him out, started telling him about the Mandela effect. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, helicopter flies over, ambulance comes down the street, police sirens turn on, and then out of the blue, this guy comes and grabs her. Like off of, like, like off of the scene, off of the Truman Show, where the guy comes in on a car and onto right. the beach. He comes off around the corner. Oh, hey, so, you know, I'm not going to say the girl's name. Hey, such and such. I haven't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. Where have you been at? Hugs, uh, kisses, and I, I got I to gotta talk to you. We have to go. I got to speak with you. And she's like, no, I'm, ta I'm talking to Regal. You got to hear what he's got to say. There's something happening here. Yeah. Takes off with her. Gone. Joey comes back, we get in the car. Well, just for, for setting the setting, this is at MacArthur Park? Yeah, MacArthur Park, Westlake and 6th Street. Gotcha. Okay, downtown 6th Street. Yeah, so I realized at this moment that I can't talk about this because whatever's around us, it's like a, it's like it's their glitch. It's like it's, it's a, I'm not supposed to see these things. And um, and so the gang stalking thing kicked off from there, and then suddenly, I little see. by little, I say, gotcha. every friend that I had in the past, right. every single friend, family member, friend, yeah. Yeah. a friend of friend, their profiles, everything started popping up, and they all started having double signs they're throwing up. They've got six six sixes. They've got pyramids, all seeing eyes, unicorns everywhere. Just up to ass unicorn. Excuse my language. They're all <laughs> seem to carry this this hive mind thing, yeah, and they don't yeah, like yeah. you around. They run from you like the plague. Did did you do it's it? It's gotten so bad that every apartment, yeah, every apartment I go to, every place that we've rented that, when I've gone to the last place with my girlfriend, uh, this woman comes up to me now, and mm -hmm. and they don't wince. It's like it's like I've seen something, and now. It's okay to just... You saw know, something you shouldn't tried. see. Like, I, I'd seen something, too. And as soon as you see that thing you shouldn't see, all of a sudden, everybody around you turns into a stalker. People you know that were okay just right. about a month ago, now they're stalking you. What gives? How, they all seem to be yeah. communicating behind the scenes. Where the hell are they meeting up, and how are they communicating? How do familiar friends yeah, suddenly I turn I into your enemy? Well, I'm, I look, so I've been dealing with that my whole life. I, I tell you what it is, though. I met a guy that uh, he seemed, he's really smart about this, and we kind of had a little falling out, and that was stupid because he, he had some really good information. But here's what I got from him. He sort of confirmed my notion that my an idea that I was having that it's interdimensional. He's taken it a few steps further. It's like this infiltration of Earth on an interdimensional basis, where you know the people that you that you knew before that were your friends, when they're coming at you, you know what I mean. Those are not the people that you knew. It's almost like they've been either taken over or they are been switched out on the Truman Show set to be people that look just like them but aren't them. In a weird, you know, in a weird kind of supernatural, you know, horrific, uh, nightmarish way, and uh, and then I'm convinced they're not even people. They're not even people, and then it goes back, uh, or you might visit a place where it's happened before. Once it happened to me in a Borders bookstore, where the person I was meeting there, they turned into like a demon. They started whistling and making all these grunting and groaning noises. Then other people in the Borders mm -hmm. bookstore, they joined in too. I was, I said, said, would you like a coffee? To this guy, this is a fairly uh, 
a known person. I'm not going to mention his name, but, uh, you know, so I said, would you like a coffee? He goes, no, nothing. Like he's going to fold his arms and just wait till whatever I had to say, he gets done with that. I get done with that. And then he's going to, then he wants to get out of there. Meanwhile, he's whistling and signaling to other people to start harassing me. And, um, you know, I'm like, Hey dude, I just came here to have a little meeting, you know, uh, no, no big deal. I'm just trying to work this thing out. All kinds of strange things have been happening. I just wanted to see if we're, if we're brothers and all in Christ. I, I wanted just some help here. And he turned into this demon. Mm-hmm. And, and the next thing you know, well, I went back to that bookstore again on another occasion. And guess what? It was just as normal as could be. Same thing happened, you know, here it, where we live now in, in this bar downtown. They all turned into... It looked like they were going to try to kill us, you know, for it uh, just like they all knew, mm-hmm. yeah. knew us. We like they all knew us. And, and they're just random people at the bar, people who don't know each other. But all of a sudden, they all seem connected like they knew us. And we had to get the heck out of there. Uh, and then we went back again another time and it was all normal. And the people there, some some the same, some of the people that work there, they were just normal to us like they they've never seen us before. Okay, that's happened. Yeah, it's like everywhere I've gone, it's, it's happened. I mean, not just you know we we do some traveling. So I mean, you know, and and whether it's you know Mississippi or Florida or um, you know Maui or you know, L.A., it doesn't really matter where. This the, when it starts up, it, it started up the other day at this supermarket, and you know supermarkets and WalMarts and things, they seem to be just notorious for for having these events take place and um it's 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 very very upsetting i can tell you that it's very upsetting but well it's like they shout stuff at they, they shout stuff at me yes and go ahead they, they I'm, I'm like i a crowd will walk by me i'll give you an example of this and i i, I felt heavily depressed because i thought i had beaten this some somewhat with a witch where i i okay it was where it all it started. And by I the way, got away with my life. I love this show right now because you began with the witchcraft and all the people that know about that, they're probably all, they know you're the real deal here. Your testimony is for real. It's, it's, it's very haunting. But it began with that. And I, I, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. drawing a straight line through that to the gang stalking. I believe it's all completely related. So go ahead, Rigo. Well, I connected it through the... This, remember I told you they were writing, the witch was writing stuff on my car and on my keychain, this, this letter A, without the bar underneath it. Well, later right. on, I started through the Mandela effect seeing every single name, Samsung, and all these different labels and companies. The A's were changing to that. Yes, and they they changed I, to a different A. I that's, couldn't that, escape that. That's right. They changed to a different A. Uh, Rich Keltner kept and I said, alerting me to that. that she put on my car. Yeah. That's the okay. that she put on my car and on right. my keychain. Folks, we're not going to answer all the questions that this is all brought up. We just wanted to, you know, give Rigo here a chance to, you know, he was he wanted to talk about this. He's a listener of the of the Zaff Report, so there is a little bit of bias there, I guess. I've been trying to stay out of it and let you just explain your own story, and uh, but it's so paralleling to mine. It's just so, and it's Los Angeles too. So I'm sure it's. Uh, I can. I know a few other people, very close friends out there. And, you know, that, that also understand exactly what you're talking about. And, uh, you're, you know, what I can yeah. say to you is, first of all, I feel bad that you're in a nightmarish situation. I, it's just, it is a nightmare. It's horrible. But, again, yeah. the antidote is always Jesus and more prayer and more Jesus. And really, you know, there's good people, too, in Los Angeles that, like, maybe that guy that took you to their... Uh, what was it like a homeless um, church kind of outreach thing? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, so yeah, yeah, well, you know, that didn't go well. No, something happened after the Mandela effect. All of a sudden, every Bible in his house is all gone. He doesn't want to talk about anything, and he told me that he has Alzheimer's, so he can't speak about okay. Any so Bible verses that okay. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. Um, but anyway, the answer is going to always be yeah, the Lord. Like, yeah. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray the blood of Jesus on this entire broadcast today and on Rigo's life to deliver him completely and forever from all of this witchcraft, gang stalking, interdimensional, 
uh, fighting spiritual warfare that Rigo would get, uh, would be able to, to be victorious in you, Lord, as we all are in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And, uh, you, you just need amen. to keep, keep on going. The Bible has got so many verses. I'm thinking Psalm 37, Psalm 91, mm-hmm. Psalm 91, uh, Psalm 23, um, yeah. you, you know, uh, just, just for starters and then, there's just so much in there of supernatural events that happen when people seem to be going to this fate. One, one thing God does is this. It's like what they intend for harm, the Lord can use for good in your life. You know, that's, that's a really important concept. And it's like they intend to trip you up. It seems like it's you versus everybody, you know, with the testimony today. Right. Do, you, do you have any significant good people in your life that, that aren't? Manifesting. Uh, the only person I've been able to to go to are, and it's very strange. Is pretty much complete strangers. I haven't uh, I haven't found a person that first of all being an orphan, but I it's mm-hmm. like even my mom that way. Like, she's just like a she's like an automaton or something. It's just she's gone for years. Uh, you bring up the Mandela effect, disappear for two years, call you back at three in the morning. Hi, son. What are you doing? You're the uh, only one that I in the morning. You're the only one I've talked to who's tied the Mandela effect into gang stalking. It's it's absolutely it's it's amazing that it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, I hadn't considered that before, but now the way you're talking about it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Well, where well, are you? It was, a hor- it was an epiphany. You're, yeah, no, no, that's it a very horrible, that's pro- I learned. Yeah, but that's prophetic. What you've said here today actually has uh, is a prophetic insight. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who would th- who would thank you if you could see them, you know, for that uh, connection to that Mandela effect because that's been a big division. You know, the people that say it's always been that way. How about this one, Rigo? It's always been that way, Rigo. What's oh. wrong? What's wrong with you, oh. man? It's always been that way. Oh, I <laughs> I don't get things. I get way where I get super aggressive. Why are you got to talk about that? Just shut up. Keep walking. Yeah. What are you talking about, bro? Yeah, it's always been that way, talking? man. I had one guy come up and tell me. <laughs> you know, he's like, "I'm just going to keep walking." You know, I'm just like, "What kind of?" You know, yeah. I No, they reject you if I, you notice I, it. I, as soon as my eyes opened up. Yeah. yeah. All it's right. So what? Well, so what's the plan? What's the plan now? Okay, you you know you're out in you know uh, a city with like you know 15 million people in all the connecting cities. And it's just, it's, it's, you can't get anywhere well, in the 405 freeway. You can't get anywhere in the five. It's bumper to bumper. It's jammed all the way down to Orange County, all the way down to San Diego. Uh, are you going to stay in that sardine can or is it or maybe it's time to move on? What do you think? There's, there's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in a sense that I, it's like, it's like I was telling you earlier. It's like I, I got depressed when I figured that this, I learned, I saw it and I said, oh God, because the, the, the letter A, the connection, I said, oh, mm-hmm. I thought I beat this. No, it's, this is all connected. It's like a, yeah. pretty much like I went through a small boot camp training. I only two right. years to deal right. with something even to deal with this. So I started doing drugs. It's painful. To try and, you know, not heavy drugs. I mean, I'm not illegal drugs. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. I started getting on sleep aids to, to I, call I, myself. Right, I right. No, I understand. And, I understand. But I called it drugs. And people out of crowds would just come by me and say, stop those drugs. And I would be like, they wouldn't even know me, see me. I'd be, I I'd be, at, I'd be at like a Walgreens or something. You know what I mean? Oh, and they would come God. by me in like a five or six of them. And somebody would just say, got to quit them drugs and keep walking. And I'd look perfectly normal. It's just been a drill. It's nothing that they could. I understand. No, 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 no I know. There's no that. way that's normal. Okay. There's no way that's normal. You're right. Yeah, and so my girlfriend is. It's a that's a whole nother. It's a whole nother situation because it's like she's. You can't be around these people. You know, I I date I I I dated a girl in in uh, foster care in Pasadena, or just in one of those group homes. Is that where you lived? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, probably there, five acres or, or, or. Well, this was just in a neighborhood on a street where there are homes up and down the street but a fairly large house where there are several girls in there and uh, i'd have to go yeah, there but, and, have you heard of the church of angels no no oh, okay it's a famous church that's where it was at it's literally the church is part of the group home it's a famous old church i from, see like the 1800s right i got you so i stayed there and 
Yeah, but basically, it's like you said, it's like a can of sardines. You can't. There's not a lot of wiggle room. You have to. You have to avoid these people. You've got to avoid cars because the moment that I start my car up, uh, and this is part of this too, I followed a random stranger and learned that yeah. there's people out there that are driving in circles for hours to the point you can't follow them. They're driving right, four city right. blocks over and over and over. Almost like it's, 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 it's part of a, like they're a robot or it's part of, a, of a, an orchestrated act. That that someone else is yeah, controlling. They're, they're doing it. Right. I tested it because I said, you know, I keep seeing this car. I, I was going out on lunch. I had stopped working. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to follow this guy. For, and I followed him for about an hour going in the same four blocks radius over and over and over again. I'm not sorry. really making any, any change. I saw that when I was young. Lane. So, yeah. When, yeah, when you're in traffic now, now that it's it's reached another level now, now it's traffic. If you go into traffic and you get on the freeway, suddenly, boom, freeway's passed. Suddenly, everyone wants to start pulling in front of you on regular streets and start driving 10 miles an hour. And mm-hmm. it's like you can't get past them. You I get understand. past one, and somebody else pulls in front of you and starts driving 10 miles again. And then another person 10 miles again. And it got bad to where I got a motorcycle. That's pretty much what I can get around these people on. Uh, but you still have to deal with the police. The police are, you know, I saw this cop. He was parked in one block. He was there all morning. And I knew I didn't have tax, so I slow down. And then the person right to the side of me, to the right of me, mm. is blocking me. And it, I slow down even more, and he slows down even more. I speed up. He speeds up. So I suddenly oh. he's like blocking me from making a right turn in order to make that right turn so I won't have to go straight past the police officer and get a ticket. So finally, I completely stop, and the guy looks at me with a blank robotic stare and keeps driving like nothing. I pull into the gas station. I look at the police car. The police car pulls out real slow, turns right, like he was waiting, for, like that was something that was supposed to happen. I go drop my girlfriend off later on that night. I come back up that same street. That same police officer in that Explorer pulls me over, takes me to jail. I sit in the jail room for a violation, a misdemeanor, no insurance, uh, spin license. He puts me in an interrogation room. And by this time, I figured out that I live in something that's completely artificial. So he's, I'm looking and seeing through it. And that makes, and so he sits down at the table and I'm like, listen, I don't know what this is, but it's all fake. And I said, you're like a Broadway actor. Could you stop acting, please? Mm-hmm. And his eyes got really big, like he got busted. Uh, he sat real close to my lap and yeah. started yelling at me that if he knows I did something illegal, I shouldn't have made that turn, blah, 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 blah. I said, fine, you can have whatever you want. I don't care. I just want to go to my jail cell. This is all fake. You're an actor. This whole thing doesn't seem real to me. I saw you there seven hours before. What were you doing there seven hours before mm-hmm. waiting for me? And then you came back the same way, eight hours. You were waiting there for me. I said, you got no authority. Jesus Christ is above you. You got a short time. You can't do anything to me. I'm going to die in a hundred years. It's all shit. Amen. And he kicked me out of the jail. I was free within two hours. I was free. I thought I was going to go to jail for a week. So it wasn't was real. So you called them on it, and then they you, you they got busted. Called them on it. And they had to let you go because <laughs> there was no case. Yeah. They're not supposed to take you to jail <laughs> for for go. for not having insurance. You're supposed to get a ticket. Or so much time where you have to go to the judge later on, and then uh, prove that you have insurance or your license yeah. or your license would be revoked. That. That's what usually happens. That's what happens here. I don't know yeah. about the laws there, but they don't take you to jail typically if you don't have all your papers in order. But, uh, you know, at this point, uh, what you're describing. Now, would you say that in the last, you know, uh, period of time that you've gotten either control of it or it's, it's gotten more or less pronounced in terms of these events happening in your life? What would you say? The only thing that I've come up with is, number one, it's, I pray to God. I don't, I, I've only, God has come into this twice. That's how very seldom it, but it's very direct where I'm, I'm in a grocery store and this is uh, back in February this year. Mm-hmm. And my sister calls me up. She supposedly can see too. She tells me all the changes and everything. She's got almost everything right. Um, except for Kennedy, the car. But I, she tells me, we go, don't do this. They're, don't eat this cereal. They're putting this type of stuff. It's, it's super poisonous. It's really bad for kids. Do not feed this to your kids. Mm-hmm. Well, I go into the grocery store uh, on Vaughn's over here in uh, Garden Grove. And wouldn't you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm 
already like mentally breaking down at that point. And then this over the intercom, it's like, buy this cereal. It's good. Kids just love it. It's on aisle six right now on sale. And I nearly like dropped all my stuff. Cause I'm like, that's the same freaking thing that I was just talking to my sister about. Yeah, so no, I'm no, just, it's uh, you know, th- that kind of coincidence is not, does not happen. So I get in line and a guy walks into the Vaughn's and he comes straight up to me and I had about $200 in groceries and, um, he bought a soda, one soda from the fridge up front. Yeah. And I thought that was strange because who goes into Vaughn's to buy a soda and then stand behind somebody that's got $200 in groceries. So I offered him nicely. I said, you can go ahead of me. Uh, you got your soda. He said, no, no, no. I, you go ahead. No, I, I like to do nice things for people that do nice things for me. I thought, um, is mm-hmm. this guy gay? Is he coming on to me? <laughs> and so I yeah. rigged my stuff up and um, the guy had, pulled out some money and um, I'm going through all my stuff and I was about $200 worth of groceries. I'm undercut about $35. And um, so I was going to put some stuff back and wouldn't you know that that guy that bought the soda, he had that exact amount of money, the $35. I'm going to pay for this for this guy. They didn't need to grab his wallet or anything. It was just there. He just handed it over to the cashier. Boom. So now I'm like, okay, uh, what's going on here? Okay. Okay. So we leave. I leave. I wait for the guy because I want to speak with him. I want to, so I'm like trying to see if he's just t- trying to, so he leaves on, Hey man, th- thanks for doing that for me. Here, let me give you my number. You know, I'm trying to gain this. No, 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 that's fine. You don't, you don't have to or whatever, you know, and you're walking out to my car, I pop my trunk and put the grocery. I said, that's really, thanks for helping me out. Sometimes you got to do nice things for people. And I said, well, thank you. Thanks man. Thanks a lot. And no problem. Walks off. Didn't seem like he wanted to talk. Didn't give me his name. I tried to get, you know, get his, he, he just walked off. Mm-hmm. Um, I shut the trunk and within that few seconds, I knew what happened. But again, it was like, a, I, the guy walking in, right. He was wearing a t-shirt of the baseball team here in Anaheim, the Anaheim angels hey, yeah. and a cap, the angels. And he, when I shut the trunk was gone. Okay. And I was like running around the parking lot looking for him because there wasn't any cars that were starting up or leaving. So I was like, okay, just here we go again. It's not what you think. Go find him really quick and just make up an excuse. Thank you again. I'm looking through the parking lot for any cars to leave. There's nothing blocking my view. Um, and there's no scenario unless he ran behind a building, like going 25 miles an hour and hid from me. There's nowhere he could have gone. So I was there for about 30 minutes in the parking lot, waiting, looking at cars, leaving, checking if it was him. I'm looking for the guy with the angel's hat. I went back in the grocery store looking for him. Gone. And so that was one time that I said, okay, this is, at least I got that. I'm calm. I was good for another couple of months because I was already going through a, a nervous breakdown. I was. Would you say that was, high, what, was high. that God's intervention or was that uh, an angel or was that? Uh, yeah, that was God. And he was, and he was, it was just, an angel ju- God. just happened to be wearing an angel's hat <laughs> to, to let you know. Yeah, because I would have gotten that. <laughs> it was right in front of me the whole time, and I couldn't see yeah, it. Yeah, that, that sounds and like so God. I shut the trunk. Sure. Yeah, I so the second time I, was, yeah. I was at an IHOP. This was more recent. Yeah, wow. Um, and well, um, I was learning that God had... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, I was learning that God was uh, sound. And I had, uh, this is recently, this is about two months. So this is twice that, that I, that God has in the, so it doesn't come a lot, but when it does, it's helpful. But I, um, was learning about sound and the vibration of particles and how that, that causes them to gain their mass in the, in the, uh, quantum field. So I was learning about that and the connection between, uh, God and, in when he's in the beginning was the word. So that's sound, sound, you know, into Amen. creation. Amen. And I went to the bathroom in IHOP. And I sat on his restroom, and uh, over the intercom, very clearly, this song came on, and it said, um, I am alive, I have been alive forever. Uh, I wrote the very first song. Mm-hmm. Um, it goes on and says, uh, it, it, it says, I, I live with you in your soul. The guy, let me see here. The guy's name, I looked it up after, his name is Barry Manilow, I think. Barry Manilow, it's called I Am Music, I Write the Songs. 
yes, that song came on. And I thought, well, if this isn't God, I don't know what it is because of what I just looked at and researched. And then here it is playing on the intercom. But those are two times where I, it really hit me hard because the verses and everything, what it was saying, was speaking directly to what I was doing. And the same way the devils did that with, with the cereal that was poisonous and then it, the way it came on the intercom and the same way that in a different way God did that. Yeah. That how many, I mean, it seems to me that the way you've described over the years since you've gotten, you know, since you've become an adult and then living in Los Angeles, all the different experiences you've had, it seems like the entire time, just looking back over it, that God has had his hand on you, a protection to make up for your innocence, your lack of knowledge of all this. As you're starting to figure it out, God's protecting you along the way, even though it may be an invisible hand or you might not even notice. But without that intervention, it just seems yeah. to me you wouldn't have made it because you had a lot, a lot. You faced an, an army of the devil, it seems, for the last yeah. you know, t- 10 years. Well, Rigo, right now I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna um, I, I'm gonna uh, wrap the show here. It's it's been um, a lot to digest, okay. a lot with what you said. I hope we can do it again mm-hmm. uh, soon. And uh, yes. stay stay right there. I'm gonna just let it. I'm just gonna let this testimony sit there because I don't think we can. I you know more incidents. I, I think we need to let what you've said sit there. Especially here's what I like: the connection between witchcraft. I know it's a lot. No, no, but but here's the main thread. There's a direct connection between w- witchcraft, covens, satanic ritual, satanic ritual abuse, human trafficking, gang stalking, and the Mandela effect. All of these are connected. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Yes, they are. That is awesome. And thank and you. And if you can't get people away from you, Zeph, this may be a good thing that you do, but when they come up to me, and believe me, they do, they come up, and start, uh, but if you start talking about Jesus, they run. But also, if you start talking about the Mandela effect, they run. I've had people come up to me and start harassing me and stuff, and I just say, "Hey, what did Luke Skywalker say? Here, I'll show you." And they're gone, hundred miles an hour. They're out the way. So that's a tool that you could use. Yes, you can frighten them by people. by showing that you know something, and then they all get paranoid that uh, someone's going to get in trouble for spilling the beans. Yes, that does happen. Yeah, okay. and it's also a form of truth, too. Sure is. Because so, yeah. you're telling the Tru- truth of something that used to be that they are created a lie. Well, you're doing a good job, you know. I mean, you're you're up against it, and, you know, it's it's, it's tough. But, I mean, the Lord's got you there. You, you seem pretty tough. So, you know, <laughs> uh, we're going to keep you – we're going to keep you in prayer anyway. Uh, because we know that uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty yeah. frightening what you've been talking about. Okay, well, folks, always something unique here at the Zaff Report. This was going to be an interview that uh, Rigo was going to do with me because he'd been listening and been struggling with this issue and mm-hmm. then wanted to hear from me about – I didn't need to talk today about I've, – I've said a lot of things about – you said everything today. <laughs> you you said it all. You put it all <laughs> yeah. together, including the A, <laughs> including the A, which is a connection yeah. to to the angels, A, and then there, to the devil, A, change, mm-hmm. changing the A, which then goes to Rich Keltner. Angels and Apollo. And then that goes to Rich Keltner, mm-hmm. and Rich Keltner kept on and on after me. He kept saying to me, he's, you know, the, we've done a lot of music together. He, he, he comes at me, he goes, the A, he's been, you know, he's trying to get me, and I'm not that, I got a lot of things on my plate. I'm, I don't really know what he's talking about. And finally, he goes, don't you see the A has changed? And then finally, I noticed yeah, it. And then yeah, I no- the once I, once I noticed it, I noticed it everywhere. It's like that A is everywhere. Okay, Rigo, stay right there. Yes. Uh, and, and before you leave, I want to tell you this one thing. I'm not the leaving. Which burns me with a lighter. Okay. Uh-oh. And when the A was popped up on everything on my car and on my on my on my you know all over everything, she's putting it on labeling on everything. That lighter, if you want to test this later on when you get home, get a big lighter, put some lipstick on it, stamp it on your arm. Because she lit a lighter and burned me with it. And when the burn was finished and it was a scar, it was a perfect A. That's all I want to say. Why did you let her do that? I didn't let her do that. It was psychopathic. She was playing with the lighter. I was barbecuing chicken and ribs. I see. And I sat down and there was a little girl there. So she flipped the lighter and burned me because she knew I wouldn't do anything to her, and especially with the little girl there. Oh. And I just yanked my arm back, and I was shocked. I was like, what did you do that for? And then later on, I said, oh, my God, that's an A, like the A on my keychain, like the A carved into my car and on my door. Okay, and are you, you're still, are you still, in, are you still in Orange County? Or? 
you don't have to say where, but yeah, I mean, I'm still out here and still there. Uh, so yeah. that's where Disneyland is. <laughs> <laughs> top of it, <laughs> <laughs> and not not Berry Farm. <laughs> Disneyland is the world. There it is. The you, the world. The world. Of, you're right there at Disneyland. And okay, Rigo, that's that's kind of fun. But I I do my heart All goes right, out. Yeah. I, I know it's tough. Stay right there. I'm going to talk to you after I wrap the show here. But you won't be able to communicate with okay. with, with me. Okay. All right. So there there he goes. Uh, that's Rigo from uh, Southern California and. You never know. This is just uh, something that came up. And um, so I'm not going to say anymore. I'm just going to let that sit there. There's a lot I could maybe say about that tomorrow or in the succeeding days. But I I don't want to. I want to let that sit there because I know I can see right now a whole bunch of you are going, yep, yep, yep. And you have your own testimony that's similar too. So this is, don't think I ever forget about this. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a long time since we've actually really focused in on this topic, you know, but I mean, it's always there because what Rigo is bringing up today, um, I got to tell you, it's, it's, it, the way he put it, it's still a, a carbon copy almost of what I've been talking about. I'm, you know, twice his age and all that. So, I mean, or, or maybe even a little more. So, you know, this is nothing new, but uh, it's, 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 and it, it cuts across all lines of, you know, all kinds of lines of, you know, money, ethnicity. It doesn't have anything to do with any of that. You can go anywhere in the world, China, you know, the North Pole. I don't care where you go. It's, it's, if your eyes are opened, if you can see, and Rigo, you've, you, you know, I just don't have to answer me here, but, you know, he's obviously a special person. You know what I mean? They're very, he's very sensitive. There are very few people like that. Uh, but they serve as little, as like to, to, to make you, you guys feel like you're not so crazy. You're not alone. So we'll, we'll, we continue and, and we'll, um, uh, we will, uh, we'll see you next time. Everybody, Zef Daniel, uh, out. Um, you know, uh, uh, um, disruption in um, public places no, on ju- purpose just so they can get a reaction out of you. Um, it could be your mother, father, daughter, sister. It could be your neighbors. It could be the emergency room personnel. It could be the doctor that you're going to see every uh, time that you need to see the doctor. It could be a preacher. It could be, you know, a drug dealer on the street. It can be anyone. All of these people are in your life, and the government is paying them to do it to watch you from a distance. And I thought, okay, well, am I being paranoid or not? I was like, this, because I couldn't understand what was really going on with me because I knew certain situations, certain things didn't feel right because I could feel people when I'm around them. But I didn't understand that um, this is what was going on, the gang stalking. And um, I have been humiliated. I have been dolled out. I have been talked about. I have been laughed at. I have been, and the, the results of that is, what they want you to do is, one, kill yourself. That's number one. Or they want you to um, um, end up in an institution or they're setting you up to send you off to jail. Or, I mean, in the end result is for you just to be hopeless, homeless, without a, a, a way out because your mind's so boggled about everything that's going on. And I have tried to convince myself over and over and over again that this is not really happening. It can't be happening. I mean, the people around me claim that they're Christians and stuff. I mean, I don't get it. But... I guess my mentality is uh, something people really need to uh, recognize that there's something real. Um, I can go on by different um, people in my family or my neighbors. Uh, it has been so many situations to where I wanted to say, hey, this is what's really going on, but I never had the courage to do it. Um, now that I know, I know it's not going to stop, but now I know. So what now? God that is all and created all led me down this path. All I'm doing is waiting for the next step. 
So, um, I don't know, it is a government sanctioned operation. It's called COPS. <clears throat> um, Bill Clinton put all caps, C-O-P-S, slash Bill Clinton, put that in the search engine, and you will see that the government sanctioned this in the 90s. If you want to know about the, um, the one the CIA and the FBI and the NSA was involved in, just look up CIA, FBI, NSA, slash gang stalking or slash uh, targeted people. Oh, I mean, you can play with the search engine. You know how to uh, search on the internet. You should by now, anyway. But anyway, I just want to tell the RH negative people: if you are being stalked, gang stalked by anyone, any number of people, even in your family, I feel alone a lot. But now that I know what's going on, I'm okay with that. You know, um, um, I just want people to know that they're not alone. Um, that there's other people out there that are experiencing the same thing and to keep your head up because these people that's doing what they're doing um, it's not for us to judge and it's not even for us to um, take revenge the only thing we could do is just wait on that next step to light up so we can walk it be blessed peace my heart thank you you know this 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 idea of being targeted from birth you know uh it wouldn't have been something you said it wouldn't have been something that you um filed in some uh, government document it wouldn't be something you said publicly so what would it be? Why you? I can't get an answer from most people. They they, they, they they get frightened of me. But why you? You know, so, you know, and it's funny, I couldn't find the uh, actual uh, audio that I had set for today, which was a real concise audio about... Um, you know, the thing that people don't want to talk about, which is this whole RH negative factor and in and, um, and gang stalking. But I mean, keeping it specifically narrow to that focus, N narrow, narrow to the RH, you know, they say all these things about it. You know, you're you're an enemy, you're good, you're bad. I mean, it's a very controversial topic. But I'm just saying in terms of um, the, the gang stalking from birth, people that fit into that particular <laughs> now who are they and why has it been so strange and why are so many of these people in institutions for life uh or ruined or suicided or whatever what what is why is it so much uh why is that the problem or misdiagnosed given the wrong medication um, you know, or, you know, surreptitiously killed, killed during medical treatments. I mean, you know, what, what is this targeting of this, uh, of this blood factor? Why, why, what is, what is that all about? Why is that going on? Well, yeah. one thing I want to add, Jeff, before we go, uh, I made a prayer request when I talked to Patrick last week that he probably thought was kind of unusual. I asked him to pray for my bands and equipment, you know, the witches, when they come at me, they come at me usually in certain ways. And one of the ways they always mm -hmm. do is out on the road because that's where I'm exposed the most. Uh, right. And I've noticed a big increase on people tagging behind me, people making cutoff moves. Uh, even had a rig almost take a dive right at me last week. Mm -hmm. And it's expanded now to other things. Uh, last week, I had a caliper, rear caliper brake exploded. Oh, my gosh. In a way I'd never seen happen before. Uh my son and I looked at it, and we sealed it off and, and, and took it apart. And uh, we could use the van a little bit, but it, it that. And then a, a few days after that, I went out to my backup van and used it. And as I pulled out, I noticed somebody had stolen the entire headlight fixture right out of my van. Turn signal, headlight, the, the, the glass, everything. Wow. 
just gone. So, I mean, it's it's small thing. I can replace it, things like that. Well, but Charles, it, we, we, we pray for this to end immediately in Jesus' name and cover you in, 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 in prayer right protect now. That, that To protect your equipment, to protect your, your routes that you drive on, to protect you from any and all witchcraft, any and all Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, uh, spells of the enemy are of no, uh, no, uh, 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 no significance anymore. These are broken in Jesus' name because Jesus breaks all, all spells, curses, witchcraft, hoodoo, voodoo, all that stuff. And the gang stalking issues that have come up here, uh, lo- the Lord breaks gang stalking because it's just another curse. It's just another supernatural event. Brother, in our, Jesus' uh, name. Charles, I see you being free of this. I see it right now. I see you, you being free of this. Brother James had Thank the same uh, attack on his equipment after he had Zeph on. Let's this out. Let's let's expand this out there. Let's and my Everybody, studio. I pray it. Yeah. And, and and your studio. Yeah. And also, Lord, in Jesus' name, and every person listening right now, everyone to this show as well. All of us that that mm-hmm. any attack on our equipment, uh, on on our work, on the work of our hands, on on mm-hmm. the thoughts, on the intentions, the things that we work to create and do, um, even as we we labor and and we do things that. Um, as the Spirit of God gives us um, unction and, and the ability to work and to create. Father, in Jesus' name, we just uh, tear apart every demonic assignment and every witchcraft spell and every uh, satanic agent that would be sent to try to hinder, to try to steal, Amen. to try to destroy, Amen. to try to thwart. And we just cancel yes. them completely. We say totally. Yes, back to the and we're yes. done right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord, through this next month, just a free flow of your Holy Spirit and yes. an abundance of the working of the hands of every person that is here and every person listening in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And another and one I have for President, healing. for President Trump. Oh God, I, I, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, okay. for this, Father. Go ahead. We come to this time, and Lord, we cast out every demon. We cast out every curse. We we break those curses. We break yes. any. There we go. That's right. That's right. People around us, Father God, our listener, the people on this panel, Father God, we we go before that, we break them, we break, we we take the sword, the the sword of the spirit, Lord, and Father God, we just slash it, we just slash any any links, any anything people are associated with that, Lord, that are hindering them into into the work, into the family, into the uh, the things that they do every day, into their body, Father God, we pray, we pray against depression, we pray against worry, we pray against. Lord, um, yes. financial discipline. Yes. We pray for God against Lord people that are that are the you know, the have addiction to drugs, alcohol, to 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 sex, to all these all these things that try to bind us, Father God. Right now we unbind them and, yes. and you call yes. you call us, Father God, to stand up yes. and to break these curse, Father like Father God and they and, and and I break that all these curses upon our listeners, Father God, upon the people that are, you know, that you know that are, are at that place, even within their own mind, and they have they are not confident in what they can do it, Father God, Lord, I I, I break all those curses, Lord, Father God, I break I break them in the name of Jesus, and I pour yes. out blessing. Amen. Pour out Amen. Praise God. Lord, confidence, Father God. I pray that, Lord, I pray resources upon them. I pray that, Father God, the things that they, they truly need for them to to stand up, to move up, to be better, to, you know, to be encouraged again, that those things will come forth right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that literally, Father God, you come down, Father God, uh, where they are, Father God, and then, Lord, you reach them up, and there you stand them up, Father God. Like you reach out to them through dreams, you reach out to them through from voices from other places, from from people that they know, and Lord, you encourage them, and they will stand up, Father God. That people will will call out your name, and miracle will happen, Father God. For people that that are hungry, Lord, feed them. For people that are thirsty, give them give them water, Father God. Lord, we thank you for that, and we pray all these things. All these things, Lord, we pray in Jesus Christ's name again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Wow. Thank we're, you, we're, we're getting Beautiful. the two. We're getting the two for today. Where we are. <laughs> it's like a natural twofer. It's just like, it's we just thank rolling. Thank you, Lord. Well, we don't thank stop you. the Holy Spirit. If we the Holy Spirit 